get you another water. Then. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Down for weapons, real quick. Got anything on you? Guns, knives, drugs? Yeah, just stand up. Everything on you? No, sir. Needles or anything? I don't have anything left on my pockets or anything. No, do you think anything? No, no, no. Knives? No, no. Necklace? No, necklace, no. No jewelry? You need me to take my shoes off or anything? If you don't mind, you just kick them off. You can sit back down.
Coke or anything? No, 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 no. Yeah. I'll, I'll hold off on this. Okay. Hi, I'm Eva. Hi. How are you? I'm here. Hey, we really appreciate you coming up here with us. And sure. uh, you know, any time during this, you need to stop and go to the bathroom, want a drink, um, snacks, thing, just let me know, and we'll, yeah. be, we'll be happy to get to it. Um, my name is Danny Anderson, and uh, I'm a deputy Simmel County Sheriff's Office, as is Eva. Um, so we just want to talk to you a little bit and we'll get this in and out, be on our way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, full name. My uh, full name is Grant Tiernan Amato. How do you spell Tiernan? T I E R N A. I like that. Your date of birth? Um, May twentieth, nineteen eighty nine. Okay. Um, home address. Home address is two one one two Salton Circle, Trulio, Florida. Three two seven six six. Um, phone number. Uh, for the home or for the home. Uh, well, I mean, my original cell phone number was four zero seven six eight seven zero seven three eight. Uh, home phone number was four zero seven nine seven one one four two two. Uh, my cell phone currently doesn't have any service with it, so I mean, it's just. So you don't have a, uh, you haven't moved to another number, just that one's no longer good. Yeah, my dad had told me that he that when he disconnected my service that he also changed my phone number. Uh -huh. So I don't know what the new phone number is. Gotcha. But, uh, I mean, it's probably, like, you can probably still see it. Do you I, have the phone, or? It, it was in my duffel bag. Oh, gotcha. Back there, yeah. Gotcha. Um, email. Do you have an email or anything? If we need to my main it? email is giamato, all one word, all, all lowercase, uh, giamato light, like a light bulb at gmail.com. Education. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing from UCF back in 2011. Uh, and that's my highest level. Okay. What, what, is there any special uh, nursing degree, what you do, or? Uh, I mean, I, I have like other certifications. Uh -huh. um, but, uh, I mean, with that, like I primarily worked in the hospital for, I think, five years five or six years, and then I was pursuing a Master's of Science in Nurse Anesthesia. Mm -hmm. um, that was back in 2015, I believe. Okay. Um, but then I didn't complete that, and then I just went back to nursing. And then when this whole, like, wrongful accusation of the grant theft charge that I told you about in the car, when that happened, 
uh, I stopped working at the hospital, and then that took like. You don't think we? Oh, we do. I don't think we talked about that before. Oh, uh, well, I had I was accused of grand theft for the third degree back in June of 2018. Um, that like went on for six months and during that time I obviously wasn't allowed to work because right. of it. Um and then Where was that at? Florida Hospital South, the main one down in Orlando. General Orange Avenue? Uh they Rollins? Rollins, that's Rollins. where it is. Okay. Rollins. Okay. Um so when that happened obviously I was dismissed from that job and then I couldn't get another job because now you have a an outstanding felony charge on your name. Sure. Um so then I got the attorney. It, it all went through and then finally in December mm -hmm. They posted on the Orange County Clerk Courts or whatever website where your where your file is that there was no evidence ever ever presented. All the charges were dropped, mm -hmm. and now I'm just in the process of expunging that from my records. Right. But um, because you know I can't keep just not working forever. Sure. Uh, and you know that was that was kind of a a topic around the house was you know I need to get started here. Right. Um, Who was your attorney for for that? Uh, Lauren Lycom, Chapman Chapman Law Group. Okay. They're, I think that one's based in Sarasota. Okay. Um, so then... But they didn't really have to do anything. Did no, they? she didn't. State attorney didn't file any charges. So. No, state attorney didn't file, uh, file anything, and then she just presented that she was going to be my attorney, and that was the most work she ever had to do. Okay. Um, and then I had been applying for jobs for the last couple weeks. I'd gotten, a, like, three or four callbacks. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went on a job interview yesterday for a home infusion nurse job. Where where, did, where was that at? Um, that was with uh, God. Acrita, Acrito. Is that like a staffing, or is that a like a like a headhunter kind of job? No, 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 no. That's uh, that's like their actual company. It's uh, God, why can I not remember the first name? It's something Scripps. Team Scripps. Where's the location? Uh, it's out close to the airport. It's on Lee Vista. What time was your interview yesterday? Uh, it was scheduled for 10. I got there at around 9 okay. in the morning. Uh, and then I think we actually had the interview at about 9.45. How'd that go? I mean, it was all good. Uh, they didn't have anything. They said that they'd probably be getting back to me by Tuesday or Thursday uh -huh. of this coming week. Get you back to work? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, it's... Like it's a crappy world when you know you don't have any money, you sure. can't you know, do anything. So financially, how how's the the nursing? What you did? I'm sorry, I just don't know that much. Or she knows a lot more about nursing. The nursing. How does how does it pay? How does it pay? Um, I mean, if you work your your standard three to three twelve hours a week, you get anywhere between I'd say forty five and fifty five thousand dollars a year. So okay. I mean, it's not bad. Um, obviously, if you work overtime, like some of the nurses who have also been nurses for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they can make six figures if if you work five. What was your best week. year? I think my best year, I, I made like fifty five thousand. Fifty five. Because I rarely worked overtime. Right. You know, and I was just because I I had the whole plan of going to uh to graduate school, mm -hmm. so I was just kind of using it as a stepping stone right. at that time. Just to pay the bills. To right. You, where you gotta yeah. gotcha. Um, and that and that and the work you were going for, what does that pay? Nurse anesthesia pays, I mean, base like about 150 mm -hmm. up to 175. Mm -hmm. You work a lot of overtime. You can cusp 200, but then you know. So what would you actually be doing? If I could do anything. No, I mean with that job, that as nursing anesthesia. Right. What would you do? Oh yeah, nursing anesthesia. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you just be. You're the. You're in the OR. You put the patients to sleep, keep them alive during surgery, wake them up, send them off to the. I thought that was a doctor that did that. In Florida, yeah, in Florida, the anesthesiologist, which is the MD equivalent, mm -hmm. if you will, they have to come in at the start of surgery. They have to induce the patient to put them to sleep. And then as long as they're comfortable with you, the surgeon's comfortable with you, then the anesthesiologist leaves, and then you take care of the whole entire surgical case. Just oversee case. it. Right. Okay. And then, again, you know, by the time you're a CRNA, you're obviously competent enough to wake the patient up. So when I was a student, though, the anesthesiologist would sometimes come back in for wake up to make sure everything's okay, and then you take them to, to the uh, PACI or the post-op area, you drop them off, you give them the nurse report, and mm -hmm. then you go on to your next case. Okay. Um, high school, where'd you go? I went to Timber Creek Timber High Creek. School on Avalon. Okay, and graduated what year? Uh, 2007. Okay. And then did you go right to UCF and start your degree? Summer, summer, yeah. Okay. What kind of grades you make? How were your grades? 
Um, high school and the first two years of college, I was A, B, C. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was in honors in the major program for uh, UCF. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my final two years when I was getting my, my BSN, mm-hmm. uh, I made A's and B's, and then I had one slip up in my final semester where I had to uh, redo a class. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up graduating in uh, August. Of what year? 2011. Okay. And did you start work right after that? Yeah, I think like a couple months after. And went to work where? Uh, I went, I first worked on the Intermediate Critical Care Unit at ORMC Mm -hmm. in downtown. Okay. And then went from where, up to Rollins at some point? No, no, no. I went to, um, I worked in the ICC there at that hospital, and then I worked in the multi-system ICU at that hospital. Uh, And then I applied for the graduate school in... December, or I, I started going in January of 2014. Mm-hmm. Was and that at Barry? That was at Barry University, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, girlfriends? Girlfriends. I had, like, my high school sweetheart uh, girlfriend um, for about five years. And then ever since then, no, like, official girlfriends, no flings or anything like that. Dates here and there. Days occasionally, but mm-hmm. I mean not really. Kind of focused on like just getting through the life the life goals that you know I wanted to achieve, and then um, you have a bunch of uh, school debt. School. I mean, not anything from UCF. I have about a hundred thousand dollars, I'd say, from my uh, math when I was going to Barry. Mm-hmm. So that's the only school debt that I have right now. Um, it kind of creeped back up when I wasn't working because I wasn't. Sure. I had to go on to the sure. deferred payments or whatever it's called sure. until I get a job. What do you like to do? What do I like to do? I like to watch anime. Um, me and my brother kind of started doing that back five years ago. I'd say he kind of got me into it. What is it? I'm sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. I don't know what it is. I mean, I thought you said MMA. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, and then then when you start explaining to it. I mean, I, I guess it, like, no. it's it's animated. Um, it's like cartoons, I guess you could say, but it's Japanese cartoons. Okay. I guess is the best way to put it. So, okay. um, it's not as it's like the the stories and whatnot, and the way that the shows progress. Mm-hmm. It's not as childish as cartoons mm-hmm. as you would think, like Powderpuff Girls and SpongeBob SquarePants and all that stuff. It's not like that. So it's adult based. It's adult based, yeah. Okay. You can put it that way, yeah. It's a uh, cover, I mean, it can cover like Slice of Life where it's just comedies. It can get dramatic, romance, all those different where do you, things. Where would one watch this? Um, you, d- you download it uh, from oh, okay. the internet, and then you can just watch it at home, like on your computer. You can watch it on, uh, you can watch it anywhere you have an internet. Is it, is it in Japanese or? It is in Japanese, and then they uh, subtitle it. You speak Japanese? I was gonna say, do you understand? I don't. I, I understand a few words. We actually just went to uh, me, and my brother, and one of my friends, or I guess friends from high school. We went to Japan mm-hmm. in from December first to December fifteenth. Oh wow! So we went because I mean, and it was anime that kind of inspired us to want to go. Was that your first time that one? Yeah, first time actually. Who went? You, your brother, who? Our friend Jericho. Jericho. He uh he's been a, he was originally a friend of my brother's back in high school and then we all have kind of stayed close. How expensive was that trip? Um, I mean, got plane tickets alone were like fourteen hundred bucks and then I'd say it was probably about ten grand total for like all the stays and whatnot. For each one of you? Yeah. Wow. I mean, it was about it was two weeks. So how did how did you were there? Yeah. How how did you, how'd you spend your time over there? Uh God, it was. We went to Tokyo for the first four days, and then we stayed there. And then we went to Kyoto for two days, and then I cannot remember all the names of the specific places. But then it just stayed, it was like one-day stays at Ryokans, which are like guest houses or inns. Mm-hmm. Um, that was food. Food is great. But we were too scared to actually go into like the shops, right. like the just like the, the side shops, because all in Japanese, they all know what, what they're doing, and we don't want to like say it wrong or... or do whatever, like impose. So uh, we actually survived a lot at night on just like um, food that you'd get from Seven Eleven. Because over there, over there, it's called Seven and I, but it's like the Seven Eleven symbol. So it's the same exact thing, and it's got way better food than what That's like crazy. the Seven Elevens that we have here. So, so we you would go just, back. Oh yeah, yeah, we we would go back. Really? Yeah, we. I think we were actually planning on going back 
November of this year. How long have you been out of work? I've been out of work for six months, since June. How did you pay that's a lot of money for to be out of work? My brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My what, brother. What does he do? He's, he's a CRNA. What is it? Sorry, the the certified registered nurse anesthetist. Okay, so what you were what you what, did, I, what we were both in the program together. Okay, and then he was able to finish, and then I did not. So he was making good money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he making that hundred and fifty hundred? He was working. A he lot. was working a lot. I mean, I don't know if he was. I think he was cusping a lot of overtime, mm -hmm. not scheduled, but like it's just kind of what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he was moving along. What do you think he made his best year? God, he showed me because he was uh. He want, he was complaining about how like his taxes alone were like the annual income of like a nurse. Mm -hmm. And I think when he showed me before like it had all ended, mm -hmm. like the uh before his pay year had ended mm -hmm. that he was already up to like hundred and sixty six. Mm -hmm. But that was like after I think the sixty thousand dollars or forty thousand dollars already came out. I can't remember. That was after it. Yeah, I think so. So he made more than hundred and sixty? That was take on. Yeah. Wow. So we, we definitely picked, we definitely picked the wrong job. <laughs> I should have stayed in nursing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely. So he he just paid for your your trip to go since yeah. you're both into this. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Jericho, what's he do? Uh, he he's got just a high school diploma. So he, I think, for the majority of the past year, he was working as one of those um, what are they called? They're like the people that watch the security cams when you go into like a gap or something uh -huh. like that. He's like one loss prevention. Shot. Loss prevention. That's mm -hmm. it. Correct. How did he pay for all that? I I mean I guess he just saved. Uh, Probably didn't have to pay for him. No 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 yeah he he like covered maybe some like daily expenses if there was like a taxi or, or something. Right. Yeah. How long did you guys plan this prior? It yeah, I mean it had been a dream of ours to go for a couple years and then we really started planning. Probably just the year before, okay. like actually like putting the money aside, getting all the reservations and whatnot scheduled. Like the order. dream trip to go there. Yeah. D this is for that anime you call it. I mean, it was the inspiration. Did when when we went there, though, we just kind of took up all the culture because through the anime you kind of see little glimpses of what the culture is actually like. Mm -hmm. So then we just wanted to kind of experience all that. So it was a good yeah. time and definitely worth going back for. Definitely, definitely. Um, hobbies. What do you like to do? Uh, okay, so besides the anime. Besides, the anime um, besides that, we would play video games. We actually just got uh, like a virtual reality headset thingy mm -hmm. for like the computer. Um, that was kind of fun. What kind of games do you play? Uh, God, mm -hmm. back in the day, we, we played Call of Duty a lot like back in the day. And then we got out of that because it was just starting to get too like... Which system did you use? PlayStation. Oh, PlayStation. PlayStation. Then we went to Xbox because that was like what a couple of our friends had. And then we went back to PlayStation. And then me and my brother got into PC gaming. Where on that we just play like MOBAs, which are like strategy type games, RPG type games. Uh -huh. um, so I've got to ask that you're into these games. So I know none of Did that. you hack? <coughs> did I hack? You guys ha did, you, did you and your brother you hack games? With, are you the guys that I've played with when I, was, when I was out of work for a couple months because of an injury that would hack and would cheat me and, do, <laughs> and, and, and lower me down to the lowest level of... Oh, oh, no, no, no. Okay. We, we, weren't, okay. we weren't that technologically gifted. But, uh, I mean, we would use, like, um, like glitches or something like that when we would play on the PC mm -hmm. where you could, like, have no recoil or, you know... It would like auto aim or something like that. So So yes is the answer you're talking about. Yeah, I mean yeah, because but, but we didn't we didn't hack other people's accounts. <laughs> no, I mean, but right there's, there's, there's I've seen people in, in the middle of an Xbox game, they'll tell you that they'll find somebody that's cheating and they'll you'll see this big hand come in and grab them. They say, Come over here against this section of the game and the guy's splatted against the wall and they just stand there and they shoot him, he dies and he comes right back there. Oh, gee. You're not one of those no, guys. No, okay. yeah, I don't even all right, know. Alright, alright, yeah. alright. Fortunately, yeah, I We're fixing up a big problem because you probably got me before. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys play a lot of, of, of the PC games. Yeah, yeah we, start, we started getting into PC games primarily. We kind of, I haven't turned on my PlayStation in months. Months? Um, I think the only other game that we really played was Fortnite, but then that was starting to get to, like... That's a big deal right now. Yeah. yeah. The younger Kids are all generation. over it. And, and actually, yeah, during the time that I was, um, that I wasn't working as a nurse, I tried to do the whole Twitch streaming thing. What is that? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, you no, 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 no. have to explain a lot of this to us? With, uh, with Twitch, it's, you got your mic and then you have your face cam, and then... You, 
basically people are just watching you play whatever game you're going to say that you're playing. Okay. And then, you know, they can donate, they can subscribe to you, which then you get, like, a monthly payment. Um, Did you have anybody doing that for you? I had, I had like, a, I think I was up to, like, 30-something subscribers. And what would, what would you charge them on? Uh, to, to with, with subscriptions, there's four tiers of it. Uh, tier one is just $5. So right when you see that you, oh, blank, subscribe to it, you get $5. Uh, is that monthly or just total? Actually, it's every Twitch pays you every 45 days because you're like an independent, mm -hmm. self-employed or something. No, but like same with, with their account. Though, they subscribe to you. It would be for a 30-day period? Or yes, yes. So every 30 days, they owe you another 5 bucks. If they resubscribe. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then there was that. Uh, tier 2 was like $10. Tier 3 was 15 and Then if somebody Tier 4, it was 24 I think. And what does that get you for? All, of, all that the higher tiers do is they give you like more emotes like little things you can put in chat mm -hmm. so that when you're playing, everybody who's in your room can chat about, you know, what you're doing or, you know, anything random. Um, and then donations are just, can range from one cent up to however high so what, a person So what were you making off of Twitch a month? Oh. Nothing really significant. It was like... So you had, you said about 30 people at one time yeah. subscribed to you? So a minimum, what? 150 bucks. 150 bucks. And then a <coughs> few donations, uh... But primarily, I guess just keeping myself busy, right? You know, doing something. There's a lot of money in this. Game. Now, are these are these, are these adults doing no. this or kids? They're they're in their early twenties. Okay. The there's thousands and thousands of streamers uh, who do that on Twitch, but there's maybe like five that make six figures, mm -hmm. and then like the two most prominent ones are Ninja and Tim the Tatman, and they both play Fortnite. Uh, like Ninja, I think makes. Three hundred grand a month from just three hundred grand. Yeah. And where's he at? Like, where does he live? No, U U U S Japan somewhere. Oh, oh yeah, he's U S. I think yeah. he lives up by Chicago or something like that. And but he's only he's I only twenty four. Like so oblivious to all this computer stuff. No, you. We yeah. played Atari when I was younger. Atari, yeah, nice, <laughs> nice retro gaming. <laughs> or Pong. <laughs> Pong, yeah, Pong. our first one. So you do you do that and. So you got a lot of computer knowledge. A good amount, yeah. I mean, M oh, more than the average person. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm computer savvy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, computer home. Good, good, good computer. I have it. Yeah, I have a gaming PC up in my room. Um, and then there's another gaming PC downstairs that we just built uh, for the VR specific. You guys build it. Yeah. And wow. then, uh, but I mean, yeah, even for like my gaming PC, we, like we would buy all the parts and then we would put it together our own little. What would, what would what a good one cost you? When I built mine, it was about three grand and then the gaming one downstairs I think was four thousand or like forty five hundred. And that's basically used for for the VR stuff you're yeah, using it for? Yeah. Yeah. And that was pretty neat neat yeah. setup. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was cool. Getting into the what virtual reality. On virtual reality it was primarily just Beat Saber. So it's like a, a rhythm based game, like Guitar Hero, like a Rock Rocksmith or Rock Band, whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you just use the virtual reality wands to hit the, the cubes in a certain way, however the song beats going. Mm -hmm. And then... Apart I can see this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apart from that, uh, we really didn't get into too many other games yet because we were kind of just focused on Beat Saber. Mm -hmm. But I think we had downloaded a few other where it's just like you're going through like a world and you can interact with the world or something like that. What other hobbies do you have? Besides that... Um, a number of years ago, like, me and my brother were actually, uh, like, gun enthusiasts, and, you know, we got, we did it wrong, where we did it all during when the, the, the season was, like, high, so everything cost so much money. During hunting season? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, for, unfortunately, we don't, we don't hunt or anything like that. But, um, we would go, like, clay shooting. Mm -hmm. um, Where'd you go? The primarily, primarily the place we went to is uh, Quail Creek Plantation. Where's that at? Like I was telling you in the car, I don't remember the... No, is it local or is it... It's like an hour and a half away from here. You know what county it's in or city? Um, Quail okay. Creek Plantation. The only place I know, gun range, I really know, I mean, that you'll do stuff like that is, is out in Geneva. I there's think. one in Geneva, right? Yeah, yeah I think there's one out there. That, I mean, that might be where it is, but I don't remember the city specifically. Uh, but we would do the clay shooting, and then we were part of the Belush County gun and shooting. Gun club or something. Yeah, whatever yeah. it was called. But that was like two years ago. Um, the only thing that we really kept up with was clay shooting, um, but even that, I don't think we've done that in probably eight months or something. What were you shooting? What, what, were you, what, what, what was your gun for that? What was it like? Uh, me and my brother both got the Benelli 
uh, like long mm -hmm. superno super magnum super is it supernova I think it is? supernova supernova that's it uh, we both had those and then during the time where like I was struggling like in this last six months I mean I sold all of my guns uh, what you, what'd you have what did, did I you have a little gun collection going I did I had uh, I had about four ARs mm -hmm. uh, they were all just where you would buy like the different parts again kind of like with the PC and then just put them all together because I'm not I'm not going like that. Why so many ARs? I mean, again, it was we were just like an enthusiast for wanting to build our own things and just kind of seeing what we could come were you up build with. Stuff you buy them already made. We would buy the specific parts and then have together. them sent to the the gun clubs or whatever, so that you could pick them up. Um, and then yeah, and then we put them all together. You put them, you guys build them yourself? Mm -hmm. Didn't have nobody doing for you? No, no, no. Yeah. So you had four ARs. What'd you have? What else? You have? Um, besides that, I had a uh, Benelli M4. Uh, shotgun. Shot shotgun. Yeah. Tactical shotgun. Tactical shotgun. What was using that for? That was just that was like our favorite. That was just our what gun that like me and my brother both had one of those. You and both had one. Yeah, and then we had um that had always just been our dream gun that we just wanted to have was an a tactical M4. We took it to the range a couple times just to me, put some me, rounds. Me too. Through. I've got an M1. Oh nice. Yeah. yeah. But the M4 is much nicer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we had the supernovas which we just use for clay shooting. And then, uh, pistols-wise, I had, I think, four or five just pistols. What yeah. I had uh, a Glock 17, mm -hmm. I believe it was. Mm -hmm. um, I had, uh, uh, <coughs> it's not the shield. It's a Smith & Wesson M9 something. I don't remember what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I had a Taurus, which was, I think, like a 40 cal 45 caliber. Mm -hmm. And then I had, uh, again, it's like the dream gun that I, that I always wanted was the, uh, the FN Tactical 45 mm -hmm. with, like, the threaded barrel and all that stuff. <laughs> Um, the TV gun? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. No no, no suppressors or anything right. like that. Because, again, during that time, it's like to get your stamp alone would take six months, mm -hmm. and then you got to wait however right. long to get that back. So we never got we never got that deep into it. Um, Still have them all, or you said you got rid of some of them? I sold all my guns, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which sums it? Uh, the Florida Gun Exchange. The what? Florida Gun Exchange. Where's that? It's down in... Uh, they have one, and, God, I am just... It's some oh, Ormond Beach. Oh, Ormond okay. Beach. That's the one. You took them over, sold them. Yeah. Sold them all at one time, or no, no, no. Just kind because I didn't want to go in with too many. Right. Then I felt like they They'd would look at you like, who's this guy with all these guns? Yeah. Or they would, they would like cut me a lower deal because right. I was giving them like a whole bunch. Where'd you get the ARs? ARs, unfortunately, like it wasn't that much. It was only like three grand or something like that for, for the all of them. them. Yeah. Just because they're how much you spend on them? You think? Way more, like at least double. Because, again, we bought them during the height of the season, and then I'm selling, apparently, where it's, like, not a good season to sell. And they told me that if they're not just, like, like companies that, I can't even think of one, like, companies that make their own, and they're just, like, a fool, like, this whole gun is all by this company or whatever, those apparently sell for more than, like, a custom one. Mm -hmm. Because some people might not like what I put on it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that's why I probably didn't get it. How about the handguns? What do you put them? Handguns was maybe like total was like fifteen hundred dollars or something like it that. Had a lot more in those. And the FN alone was sixteen hundred dollars. You, bu you buy all them all new? Yeah, all new. The the rifles you put together. Rifles we put you, together. You the customize them. Yeah, the, but the handguns were new. Handguns were brand new. Shotguns were new. We what did you get for shotguns? For, what did you get for the M4? For the M4, that one was like the highest one. I think they gave me like eleven hundred for it. What did you pay for it? About fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. That's not too so bad. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Um, and then for the uh, the Supernova, it was only about 700 but that one cost about $1,200. And that one, uh, I think we actually had to get from Gander Mountain mm -hmm. um, way back when. Do you have any of these left? Anything? Or do you, do, you keep, do you keep anything for yourself? No, no. I ended up... Got rid of her, everything. Got rid of everything. So I was just, I was just trying to get some semblance of money in. Um, keep up with your payments? Keep up with my payments, but also because, like, the, the whole trip was coming down the line. Um... You know, my brother had to uh, like foot the bill for the to get the attorney. Um, so you know, it's so like there was a lot of stuff. What did you pay the attorney you know, off? I think it was eight thousand dollars for the holding holding the attorney. Retainer. Like, retainer. Retainer fee. And and basically, she had to do nothing. She had to do nothing, and 
um, he got like annoyed because he like he apparently wasn't told that it was non-refundable. But I, right. I like I know that I told him because like I had to send in the document signing it saying this is non-refundable. I've, I've known, of, known of any attorney that takes a retainer that ever gives you anything back. Yeah. So, <coughs> so I didn't hire me. That's what it's going to cost. Yeah, I didn't. He didn't get anything back from that, unfortunately, right. and she ended up. I think only going through about three thousand of it. Mm -hmm. So, because what was it? I think five thousand was for the criminal case, and then three thousand was for the other case if it had to go to the Department of Health, mm -hmm. which that never had to happen. So that three thousand is just. So your nursing certificate is still good. Uh, free, clear, and active. It's always been clear and active. It's just the quintessential. You go to that background check, mm -hmm. and then they'll see an outstanding thing. Even though I have the paperwork now saying. Everything's been dropped. He's in the process of expunging his records. Did you have to go in front of the board or anything? No. no. I didn't have to go before the judge. Cause when no, uh, same board of nursing. Oh, no. With any of this. No. Oh, that's good. Um, you know, even when even when it all went down on the day where uh, I was accused of that of that felony, you know, the the, uh, the cops came in and then they handcuffed me and they were like, you know, you've been charged with this. We're taking you down to the, um, I think it was Orange County? The Orange County mm -hmm. jail area. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to have the picture taken and stay in the the sitting area where they process you all and everything mm -hmm. like that. And you know, I'm using the the phones on the the cord. You know, trying to just <laughs> pass around the phone. And yeah. I'm surrounded by all these guys who are talking about you know. Who are real criminals? Yeah. <laughs> who are real criminals? And criminal. the first person I call is my dad. Or, I mean, uh, my my brother. Okay. And what uh, is your brother's name? You Cody. My brother. Cody. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, first person I called him, and he was at work at the time, but he answered his phone, and I was just like, look, I'm freaking out, uh, I've been charged with this, I've been told that my bond is this, and then he, I guess he tells, you know, whoever was, was working that day with him, I gotta, I gotta go. So then he, uh, he calls my mom, he calls my dad, he smooths things over as best as he can, and he's just basically saying I'm going to to pay this. Um, and then I think I was there for like seven hours or something, even though it was paid within like the first hour. Right. But it just takes a little time to get all right. the paperwork and right. the booking in and then the bond process to go through. To right. Down. Right. So that's dismissed. You're out looking for jobs, applying pretty regular? But yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I'd say pretty regular. Anything left in savings? Nothing left in savings. I think I had like three, four hundred dollars. Uh, but brother kind of helping you through. Yeah, yeah, I mean, brother was helping me. My dad was covering um, the rent that he called it, which is just like the monthly payment to, to for us to help since we all live at home. What was that? What did you pay that? Six hundred dollars a month. Yeah, and then um, it's not a bad deal, is it? No, and then I mean, he was he was covering like cell phone. We were paying for our own internet. Um, I imagine for that game you want to set, you gotta have better than basic basic internet, didn't you? Yeah, unfortunately, out where we live, it's it's like our street, like the street coming down, I think, before Christmas, before you turn in, like that's the dividing line. Everything before you turn into Fort Christmas, all the nice big fancy houses mm -hmm. that are on that side, they all have Spectrum and the Gigabyte connections. They have everything available to them. Mm -hmm. But then right when you come down here, where I guess the older neighborhoods are, they haven't branched out everything. So I think it was just AT&T. That was providing service, and I mean, we have the highest one, but it's still like I think it was 50 megabytes download and like 10 megabytes upload. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's not that great, but it was good. So basically, all awesome. all your computer systems were underworked for what yeah. their, their capabilities. Yeah. Were. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure that virtual reality takes up a lot of uh, of speed, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Close with your brother Cody. Let's talk about Cody. Oh yeah. 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 Me and Cody. Who's older, you or him? He is. I'm the youngest one. I'm 29. He's 31. Okay. My oldest brother, Jason, is 35 or 36 now. Uh -huh. um, who who lives at home? It was, all three boys live at home. No, no, no. It's just me and Cody, and then mom and dad. Okay. Uh, tell, tell me about tell me about Cody. Cody. Let's see. Uh, me and Cody had the quintessential rough like fighting each other and whatnot when we were the younger. Love, the love hate right. uh, typical siblings. But then I would say like my junior year of high school. We were all on the weightlifting team together. Uh, that's where I got to know a lot of like his guy friends. Um, and you know, we just we stopped like arguing at that point. And then 
we all, you know, we decided to go to nursing school together. We decided to go to the the nurse anesthesia school together. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we did everything together. I mean, he we was were the better student. He was the better student in everything up through nursing school, and then I was actually the better student in nurse anesthesia school. But uh, there was like a, again, kind of like. What are you the, guys? Sorry. No, 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 are, no. You, are you guys at the same time in the same classes? Yeah. So you're the but not, not, same not for nursing school, not for nursing. No, school. no, I mean for the, for the anesthesiology. Yeah, yeah, we sat right next to each other. So you're in there doing things together. So you got somebody to study with. Yeah, you got somebody to work to bounce things off of and work yeah. with. Yeah, and we would do that all the time. We we're burning the midnight oil. But you were better at it. Yeah, uh, and that was the one time that he actually admitted that I was uh, didactically more competent than him in that field. Um, and then who's better in weightlifting? He was. Oh, okay. He 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 broke a number of school records. Uh, I think he was like the 129 weight class. I was the 119 weight class. But uh, he was he was definitely stronger mm-hmm. in uh in high school. And then um. But yeah, uh, we were close. I mean, I mean like bonded. You know, uh, I don't really know how else to really say it. It was a lot of people thought that it was weird because we did everything together and because we were so close, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, a lot of people understand the bond of brothers. Though. Yeah. The true bond if you're close to your And, I mean, during, like, this whole time, I mean, kind of like with just a few examples I've given you, he was... He'd take care of everything for Always me. there for you. Yeah. Always there to support you. Always there. Um, Fight with you one minute, but make sure that you are not stuck in jail for some silly charge. Right, right. The nice. And, um... Yeah, I mean, he was just... He's always been there for me, so... With my oldest brother, Jason, not so much, just because... He was adopted to begin with, um, and then... Who, he was adopted by who? My dad. He was my mom's son. Was um, your mom married before your dad? No, no. Just had it. Just, just had it. Right. Okay. Um, and then he was heavily restricted when we were younger uh, for, for lying and stuff like that to our dad. Mm-hmm. So basically, he would, like, uh, he would go to school, and then he'd come home. He'd have to stay in his room. There's, like, no TV or anything like that, especially... Not, you know, 15 years ago or something like that. But, um, you know, he'd come down for dinner and then he'd go back up and he'd do his work. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the weekends and whatnot, he would, like, go out and pick weeds and, like, do that stuff and then come in and then do the same thing. So, unfortunately, me and Cody never really got to interact with Jason, the oldest brother, uh, a whole lot. Um, but, I mean, Jason's been, like, I think he's one of the most genuine people that you'd ever meet. He's Cody's definitely when you're way closer with. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. hands down, hands down. Go on vacations. He's helping with bills, helping with 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 the legal issues. Right, and I mean, study together. Study together. We yeah, did everything together. Connected at the hip. Any um, ever any issues really with him? No, like I was saying, during this last six months, it, it had been a very trying time. Um, you know, financially, trying to get the job thing going, worrying about this whole what's going to happen with this legal stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but like even through it all, I mean. He would like have his moments where he would get extremely upset. Like, uh, like you know, he never gets violent, I guess you could say. But like at one point, he got so upset that he like pushed a cabinet and then it like dented into the wall. Um, and he, I mean, so he'll like lose his temper, kind of like my dad. But um, yeah, I mean, at least with me, he's always been like where he's he's there for me. Like we're whatever it takes, regardless of what's happening, I'm going to take care of it for you. Um, and I mean, over like the last six months, I mean, it, it's it's been sad for me because like I see everything that like he's doing and like I can't be like how I've always been with him where, you know, I'm, I'm helping out too or I can do something for you, right. you know, where we're kind of on the same playing field I know that you make more money than me and all that kind of stuff, but it's like, you know, we can do the stuff together. You don't have to pay for my dinner. You know, when we go out with the guys, you don't have to pay for the trip, you know. It's just, it would, you know, I, I couldn't help relieve his stress, I guess, as well as I always used to. And but it's also the camaraderie that you, know, yeah. you got your brother to go do stuff with. Right. But then, I mean, I know for me, I had been bummed out just because, like, I've been out of work. I, You know, my whole life it's been school, work, school, back to work, and then just I mean, that's it. You know, sacrificed all my 20s and never went tailgating or anything like that. 
Do you have any issues with depression over all the legal issues and, and be honest? I, I would say that I was depressed, but um, you know, I'd always put on the put on the happy face for like my brother and how, what how, how would you deal with depression? You know, I I talk to God. Uh, I try and just rationalize it in my head that you know I haven't heard anything from this attorney in five months, six months. I mean, you'd think that if it was something so severe that you would have heard about it by now. Um, so I was just trying to rationalize to myself that hopefully this can all get taken care of, and then I can get back. I was looking towards the future, you know, like then I can do like what I'm doing now, where applying, you know. Everybody likes me when they talk to me and they look at my resume and they see all my experience and then just waiting for if I get the call back. Well, you, 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 got, you know, of course, I'm sure you know this. You've got that little blemish yeah. over no fault of yours that goes away, but still it's there. They can see it. Right, and right. And you have to explain away. Right. Here. Even though it was dropped, you still have that, that little check right. mark that they, you've got to get by. Right. And then that's, that's tough to, to be go from what you were and you're working towards you know, the job your, your brother has right. and, you know, the financial gains, you know, the difference between being the nurse and the program you're going to, it's, 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 it's a huge burden on you, of course. Yeah. Did you ever take any medication for the depression? No, no, mm -hmm. never. I never took any, uh, like... Or even self-medicate? No, I never took any, like, antidepressants mm -hmm. or anything like that. I think um, the only thing, just because, like, sleeping was kind of off and on at a time, I would take, like, um, um, like Benadryl just to, like, help me go to sleep back at home and then when... Um, I think the only other thing is like sleep aid, which is again, it's just mm -hmm. diphenhydramine. You know, secondary side effect is just drowsiness. It's not like its actual purpose. And then melatonin, just to help with the sleep cycle. Because I work nights all the time, so I was always a night owl, always awake. And then now it's like trying to get back in trying to because yeah, I'd be going to days. Um, but that's the only thing I ever took. And then Advil, ibuprofen for like headaches, but. No antidepressants, no medical history, none of that type of stuff. But you and Cody, since you've been adults, any any physical fist fights, anything? No. When we were super young, but yes. besides yes. that, no. Yes. no, yeah, yeah. Um. So living at home is who? Me, Cody, uh, Dad, and Mom. Tell me about your mom. My mom has. Uh, she's always been the. Uh, it's kind of like Cody. She's always been the one that focused on me. And um, she, I mean, she she worked at home. She uh, what she did? She was God. I I do not like a something manager, like a client manager for Nuance Transcription Company. What's that? What's that? Uh, basically, uh, Nuance. Their major thing is medical transcription. Okay. So it's just all the the things that the doctors are saying while you're in the hospital. And then, um, well, would she make sure that those all got transcribed? She would manage the report? people who they did that. who did all the transcriptions, and then she had a couple people where th there's like the managers over those people that then she would also take care of. And I think she was in the stage now where she was kind of branching out to different uh, countries. Mm -hmm. So she had just gotten like this Canada account, I think, where she had to basically do the same thing, but now it's just all she had, a, she had a good job. Oh yeah, good paying job. It sounds like. And yeah, she uh, she only. I think she told me that she completed high school. But if she didn't, then she didn't have a high school diploma, or she did. I honestly can't remember. Mm -hmm. And with that, when she first started doing everything, like with my dad, and her, she was just a medical transcriptionist. So mm -hmm. she wasn't, she's making like 35000 a year mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, but now she had worked her way all the way up to making about $90,000 a year mm -hmm. uh, at this job. Stressful as hell. You know, I'd, hard work I'd, pays I'd, off. I'd hear, yeah, yeah, I'd hear complaining. <coughs> Do all that stuff. Where was her office at? Uh, you come down the staircase and then it's right to the right. So it's like it's got like a potted plant in there. It's got like a bay window or like oh, three windows. No, I say office. Oh, at home. She she worked at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh I thought you said she worked at. Oh no, she works for Nuance. Oh, okay. But from she, the house. Yeah, she works from home. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like where like all of our internet and crap is against mm -hmm. like the wall. And like the home office. Yeah, exactly. work out? Yeah. Okay. It was like originally a dining room, but then it was transitioned into like her office. Hmm. And fights and fusses with mom? Or you, or no, I mean, were, we were you the baby? You, tr yeah. you were truly the family baby. For my mom. For yeah. my chief. Yeah. Okay. For my mom. <laughs> um, Mom's favorite. Yeah, okay. and I mean, I had been being told that because again, it's like this last six or seven months was just like stressful for everybody. Sure. And. You know, countless times my dad would like come up to me 
and he'd make like me feel like he'd try and use things and word things to make me feel guilty so that I would you know do everything that I can like get a job almost and, like a motivation right uh, and he he'd tell me time and time again that you know you're her favorite I mean she would do anything for you mm-hmm. and I mean it's like yeah I don't need to hear that I mean that's not what would motivate me sure um, but no with mom I think we yelled at each other a grand total of like three or four times my whole life. Um, I've never like yelled at her for anything because I mean she's never done anything wrong. She's always been the one who's stood by you. stood by me, but tried to, you know even during our early childhood when it was really rough with our dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, that? My dad's a Leo Type A Italian mm-hmm. personality man. He's very focused on his future. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very focused on everything that he's sacrificed in his life for the better, betterment of all of us. Um, you know, like he's always dreamed of going hiking up in the mountains. They have a property up in Tennessee that they built. And I've actually, me and Cody and Jason have never been up to that house just because so mom and dad hide that from you. That's our, our secret hideaway. A, a little bit. No kids allowed. A little bit. But I mean, they... Have you seen a picture of them? Oh, yeah, yeah. What yeah. kind of place is it? Um, it's nice. It's like, I think my dad has emphasized that it's about half the size of the, the house out in Juliana, where we all grew up. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, I mean, super modern. It's got, like, the brick layout on the whole thing. It's on, like, four or six acres or something like that. Is this, is, and where's that? Tennessee, is it? Tennessee, and it's, um... Is this, is this up in the little place, like, they rent the rental cabin areas, or is it where a lot of touristy people No, go? no, it's very secluded. Okay. It's, uh... And why am I so terrible at remembering these things? It is... It's like an hour out from Gatlinburg. Okay. God, I can't remember. But it's it, no, that kind of general area. It's very secluded. It's, it's like you see a house like on the satellite thing, and then it's got like acres and acres and acres of trees, and then you might see like another house right over there. And then off like the back end of their property, they would send us pictures where it's got like the, the guardrail, but it overlooks like a valley. Mm-hmm. So... Um, that property had actually been causing my dad a lot of stress because it, I think it's been built for like five or six years. He only goes up there once every month, once every couple months just to do maintenance, not to like mm-hmm. enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And then every like other month, him and my mom would go up there for like a week. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's like my mom would always just be like, you know, I'm working every day. Like we're doing stuff in the yard, mm-hmm. we're clearing this, clearing that. Didn't get to enjoy the house. Right. And then my dad, apparently there was like this hog issue up there that it's been destroying his lawn, you know, everything that they're maintaining. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, he's he was like stressing about all the money that that's costing him. And, um, yeah, so. So, like, yeah, I guess back to your original statement with my mom. Never any issues. I mean, she, it was always, like, if there was somebody that I could talk to and, like, Cody wasn't available, I'd always talk to my mom. I'd always let her know what's going on. Um, yeah, I mean, she would help me out through through anything. Okay. Tell me about Dad. Dad. Uh, what does he, he do? Dad's a pharmacist. Okay. Uh, he works for CVS. He's been a pharmacist for, I think, 35 years or so. Well, he's worked for CVS? No, he, uh, he worked for the hospital, ORMC, actually, or I think it was something orange back in the day. But um, he worked for ORMC for about 15 years, and then he worked with Home Infusion with Ambient Healthcare for like 11 years or 13 years. Mm-hmm. And then he finally got into this, the sales one uh, with CVS. What do you mean? Where he's just, he's on, he like sits in a cubicle, and then he's got the headphone on, and then if somebody calls in, he just like tells them what they have to do, like pharmacy-wise. So re- other pharmacists? retail, retail pharmacy. So he wouldn't go to like the CVS that right. you see on the side of the road. He yep. was at like Caremark or something like that, which is owned by CVS. Mm-hmm. It's like 650 employees. He tell me about like how it's a a bunch of pharmacists doing the same thing. Right. Yeah. Doing? Basically talking to other pharmacists. Talking to other pharmacists, talking to doctors, talking to patients. Gotcha. Patients for like their home health care sure. stuff that they have, sure. and they just call into the 24-hour pharmacist. And then uh, you know they help them through with whatever they're whatever they're. Do you like that job better than being in a CSA? No. no, he hated it. He 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 tried when uh because he was fired mm-hmm. from oh sorry and then he was 
uh, like IV home infusion with Florida Hospitals mm -hmm. Home Infusion Group for only about two or three years. Mm -hmm. um, he was fired from that for being, like I guess, to not like soft, but like an asshole, because mm -hmm. uh, he would like. Like, his manager or something was this, like, young woman, and then she was giving him crap, and then he's like, I've been a pharmacist for this many years, like, I don't, and you're younger than me, it's like, I don't have to listen to you, you know. Right. So I guess he blew up one day when he was down at work, and then um, because of that, he ended up getting fired, and then he was out of work for about three months. And then he was trying to get back into the hospital system, trying to do home infusion again. Mm -hmm. But because of how old he is, and because he has an RPH degree, which was the original pharmacist degree, he doesn't have the new PharmD, um, he just fuck issue up there that it's been destroying his lawn, you know, everything that they're maintaining. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, he's he was like stressing about all the money that that's costing him, and um, yeah, so. So like, yeah, I guess back to your original statement with my mom, Never any issues. I mean, she, it was always, like, right. if there was somebody that I could talk to and, like, Cody wasn't available, I'd always talk to my mom. I'd always let her know what's going on. Um, yeah, I mean, she would help me out through through anything. Okay. Tell me about Dad. Dad. Uh, what does he do? Dad's a pharmacist. Okay. Uh, he works for CVS. He's been a pharmacist for, I think, 35 years or so. Well, he's worked for CVS? No, he, uh, he worked for the hospital, ORMC, actually, or I think it was something orange back in the day. But um, he worked for ORMC for about 15 years, and then he worked with Home Infusion with Ambient Healthcare for like 11 years or 13 years. Mm -hmm. And then he finally got into this, the sales one uh, with CVS. What do you mean? Where he's just, he's on, he like sits in a cubicle, and then he's got the headphone on, and then if somebody calls in, he just like tells them what they have to do, like pharmacy-wise. So re another pharmacist? retail, retail pharmacy. So he wouldn't go to like the CVS that right. you see on the side of the road. He yep. was at like Caremark or something like that, which is owned by CVS. Mm -hmm. It's like 650 employees. He tell me about like how it's a a bunch of pharmacists doing the same right. thing. Yeah. Basically talking to other pharmacists. Talking to other pharmacists, talking to doctors, talking to patients. Gotcha. Patients for like their home health care sure. stuff that they have, sure. and they just call into the 24-hour pharmacist. And then uh, you know they help them through with whatever they're whatever they're. Did he like that job better than being in no. a, a CSA? No, he hated it. He 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 tried when uh because he was fired mm -hmm. from oh sorry and then he was uh like IV home infusion with Florida Hospitals mm -hmm. home infusion group for only about two or three years. Mm -hmm. um, he was fired from that for being like I guess to not like soft but like an asshole because. Mm -hmm. uh, he would like, like his manager or something was this like young woman, and then she was giving him crap, and then he's like, I've been a pharmacist for this many years, like I don't, and you're younger than me, it's like I don't have to listen to you, you know. Right. So I guess he blew up one day when he was down at work, and then um, because of that, he ended up getting fired, and then he was out of work for about three months, and then he was trying to get back into the hospital system, trying to do home infusion again. Mm -hmm. But because of how old he is, and because he has an RPH degree, which was the original pharmacist degree, he doesn't have the new PharmD, um, he just wasn't able to get back into the avenue that he wanted to. So that's why he was forced, basically, to go to retail. Mm -hmm. So, but, I mean, he would, he, he'd tell me every day or every week that, you know, he hates it. Uh, he's just trying to get to that retirement earmark so that he can stop. Because when he goes up to Tennessee, he doesn't want to get recertified in Tennessee and even work part-time like what, what his dad does. Um, what do you mean, what's his dad do? His dad's also a pharmacist, okay. but he originally he lived, he lived in Florida and then now he lives in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And he just works part-time as a pharmacist, but he got the whole recertification, so he could keep doing that. Right. Um, dad make good money? Uh, I think he would tell me that he makes like between one hundred ten and $120,000 a year. Not bad money. So, yeah, it's not bad. Um, well, so I'm sure he, him and mommy are both happy to see, you know, that both of you going to that program right. they can make more. You always want your child to do better than you. Right, and I mean, you know, that was what my dad always emphasized when he was when we were younger, going through grade school and high school and college. We were heavily restricted, but we were allowed to do some things. 
Like, it wasn't like Jason's situation where he was just like, like, the door's locked, you know, you're staying in there type thing. Um, and who was that? Who was, who was keeping, um, who was the disciplinary in the family? My dad. And was he the one that decided Jason stays yes. locked in? Yeah. What did mom think about that? Mom didn't approve of it, obviously, but back in that time, my dad was a very, like, angry, violent type person. Overbearing? Overbearing. Um, you know, he would, he would, like, push my mom, and, like, one instance, you know, it was getting to that age where me and Cody were kind of getting old enough to maybe be able to do something if she needed our help. And uh, I remember her and my dad were, like, in their room, which if you go down the stairs, it's right there to the left. Um, we heard our mom yell that, he's hurting me, he's hurting me. And then me and Cody run downstairs, and we go into the room, and then we're trying to get our dad off of our mom, and then my dad elbows back, and that's why my nose has got its little, like, bridge mm -hmm. right there. Um, but, I mean, that's, like, how he was, like, spankings with a two-by-four... Um, you know, like baseball practice, it'd be like four or five hours, and he's hurling the ball as fast as an adult can, and we're like seventh to eighth grade trying to catch this stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely very overbearing, but he would always rationalize that he's just trying to like secure our future. Violent towards the family. Violent towards my mom and towards me. Never to Co and, and towards Jason, uh, but never to Cody. Why? Um, I, don't, I mean... Cody, his favorite? Yeah. Of I mean, three boys? Yeah. And with that, I mean, I could kind of see it, but Cody also never really made any mistakes. He he did a few things wrong. He lied a few times. You know, he cost my dad some money a few times, but he was never like a repeat offender, I guess you could say, whereas me and Jason, you know, we had that difficulty where it's like, okay, we got a C or we got a D on something, and I just don't want to tell Dad about it. Sure. But then he would find out, and then, you know. Dad ever abuse you? When we were younger. Um, How so? Spankings with, like, a 2 by 4 and then, you know, he'd, he'd use, like, uh, I mean, it was like a 2 by 4 that was fashioned into a paddle called the lightning, the, the, the lightning rod, I think is what it was called. That? No, he, he broke it on me. Uh... I'd be sorry, I would, I would probably take it to my dad, take it out and burn it. Yeah. So he didn't have it anymore. But, um, yeah, he would, um, you know, he'd do that, and then he'd push you around. Like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't punch you. He wouldn't bruise you. Slap you? He never slapped me. But I guess I should say the only place that I ever got bruised was on my butt from, from being spanked. Belittle you? He would belittle me when I was younger, but again. How long since you've been out of work? Um... No, I mean, not really. He would just make me feel bad that, like, he would make me feel bad that Cody's doing all this stuff to, like, um... And you're not. And I'm not. Like, I'm not contributing. You're not as, not as valuable, maybe. Right. Maybe that's not the right word. But you're, you're not, you're not, you can't contribute enough to what needs to be done. Right, and then, um, But nobody knows better than you that you want to be out there. Right. You want to have it. Yeah, I mean, I, the problem, I guess, was, was that I was... I was always, like, the, the jokester, the one that could calm everybody down, make everybody smile. If it was a heated situation, I could say a joke or something and then make everybody kind of move past it. And I was just in the point where it's like, you know, I'm hearing, you know, all this stuff from Dad. I'm seeing how much Cody's helping me. You know, Mom's stressed out with her job. And it's like I'm not doing anything. And it's like I'm in that situation where it's like, I'm not not doing something because I don't want to. I'm held out because I'm waiting for this whole legal thing to get taken care of and then sure. for jobs. We've been talking for a while. Do you get to stretch your legs to go to the bathroom or anything real quick? Uh, no, I mean, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 12 hours a day yeah. working as a nurse. I'm, gotta, I'm used gotta, to gotta, sitting or standing. Take advantage of it. That's why I said it. it <laughs> I want to make sure that if you do, we, we take those breaks. And sometimes it's time to collect your thoughts because you know, I'm just sitting talking, 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 talking. Right, right. Think about what, you, what you're saying. Um... I want to make sure you got a break. Breaks been in because this isn't the hospital. And oh yeah, make no. Sure that you want no, to I'm good. It's like with water and stuff. I'm not a breakfast person. And okay. Waters. So, when's the last time your dad put his hands on you? Uh, the last time my dad put his hands on me would be, I'd say. 
kind of the middle of December of 2018. What happened? It's because, um, you know, with all the money that had been getting spent and um, I guess just a mix of everything that I've been saying just kind of boiling up in him um, and the fact that I was, to him, it seemed like I wasn't concerned about it. So, and then plus I was, you know, I wasn't acting like myself with the jovialness and, you know, sure. all that kind of stuff. Um, my father chose to admit me to, like, a like an, a depression or an addiction clinic or something like that in Fort Lauderdale called Cornerstone. When was that? That was December 22nd. Okay. Until, I think, uh, January 4th. Did you agree to go? I, I didn't, but they said that, you know, this was your only... Who said? My dad. Okay. And that was in Fort Lauderdale? Yes. Yeah. Did your mom agree to with it? My mom and my brother both agreed, but Maybe. it was my dad who was like the iron fist, like, this is what's going to happen. Like, you know, he can't... Why did he say he needed to go? What was his reasoning? Because uh, with the way that I was acting, he just... He didn't see that I was doing anything for, like, the positive. Um... You know, and a lot of it just came back to money uh, with him. Uh, he would, he would like, allow me to, to spend money that he had, uh, like, with his credit card or something like that. But it's like then whenever I did, it was, like, a huge problem. Okay, so you had one of his credit cards. Yeah. And what were you buying with it? Uh, well, what I was doing is um, over the past, four months or something like that. I've been ta I've been talking to this woman online. Who's she? Uh she's as embarrassing as it is. She's a she's a That's cam she's a cam model. A what? A cam model. Do you, all right. do either of you guys know what that nope. is? Uh, just, just like all the videos you have to tell us. A cam model it's like they they it's like a virtual girlfriend, I guess you would say. Okay. Like that type of situation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the money went to her. Okay. Where's she at? She lives in Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Where's that? It's over in Europe. It's like okay. outside of Germany. Okay. Something like that. You ever been there? No. Okay. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't that serious. So okay. what would you give her money for? Um, just for like the time online with her. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was just like that type of thing. And what did she charge by the minute, by the hour? Minute. Okay. Yeah. And how much is it per minute? Oh God, I think it was like it was like ninety tokens a minute, and it's like the conversion rate for all of that is. Like six hundred dollars for like a like five thousand or something tokens or something like that. So, and then it was four hours a night. Um, so I mean, it's, I mean that's basically just where all the, like the costs went to. Was you pay real money for the tokens, then you use the company's digital currency for, okay. for that. So, so you do that. And when did you meet her? I met her um, at the. Beginning of July, yeah, at the very beginning of July. Okay, and and still talking to her? Still, yeah. I mean, more just on uh, like Twitter, okay. like just through direct messaging. Um, again, cell phone service doesn't work, so it's like I can't use the the <laughs> chatting like that. How much do you think you spent on this? Because it's kind of pricey. Yeah, nine, uh, ninety tokens and and five five thousand dollars for for how many tokens? No, no, it's uh, $600 for, for 5000 For 5000 yeah. Okay. So how much do you think you spent um, on this? Probably close to like $200,000, I'd say. $200,000? Yeah. And where'd the money come from? Money came from me, uh, my brother, and then my dad. Did they know where the money was going to? They didn't know that it was going to uh, a cam, a cam model. I, I was saying it? that it was going towards my Twitch streaming, uh, like, Beginning like, put, yeah, like advertising, like putting my name out there and that that type of thing. But based on what you're telling me, only so many people make so much money. So just, I think just a few just a in the country make a bunch of money. Right. So what, that that was like the, the ultimate goal is to get to that. I was level. hoping that I, that the stars would align and then I would be like one of those people because I was good at the games and I you know I'm a like a funny pleasant person on the camera and that uh -huh. type of thing. So um, yeah, I mean that's so I guess to like bring it all back with why I was brought to Cornerstone, uh, it was. 
a mix of all of those things. It's like he felt like, you know, I, um, he felt like... You need to be grounded? Yeah, yeah. And so then I was there, you know, I spoke to, like, the therapist and psychiatrist and all that stuff. I didn't need any medications for anything. Mm -hmm. They had analyzed it as, this is an isolated event. You've been out of work. You have this PTSD from the whole getting arrested thing. And, I mean, the last thing on my record was, I think, a speeding ticket back when I was at UCF. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just having all of that stuff going on. Um, but then I didn't, they had signed me, they, they had signed me up, I think, to be there for 60 days. Mm -hmm. But then I was only there until January 4th. So Who paid for that? My brother, Cody. What was the cost of that, you know? 15000 It was $15,000, and then I think uh, when I had gotten back, we were going through the process of calling them and seeing if we could get any type of refund. And I think they said that he was going to get refunded $3,000 from his fifteen. Sure. Um, but I don't... there so long. Right, right. But I don't know if that transaction had ever gone through yet. So their final diagnosis of you was what? That I was fine. That... You didn't need to be there. Yeah. That I was, I was fine. I told them all about like my living situation and how it had been stressful, and then it got better, and then now it's just stressful again. But they had all just said that it was just this isolated just situational event. Situational PTSD from right, yeah. Like the once last you once you can get this legal thing taken care of, which I I don't know if I mentioned, but when we looked online and we saw that all the charges mm -hmm. had been dropped, that was on like November 30th or 31st, the mm -hmm. day before we were going to Japan. Mm -hmm. So. Well, that was good and everything. Um, I still knew that it was still going to be like on your record until you get it expunged. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was still thinking, okay, at least now I can maybe start applying when we get back from Japan. Sure. Um, but you know, yeah. so I mean, after you get back, you got back on the fifteenth of December. Of December, you get back. I thought you said you went on the 22nd of right. December. Right. Yeah, when that's, 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 when I, that's when I went to, yeah, it was after Japan. Oh. And it was because when I had gotten back, my um, my mom and dad were, you know, dealing with a lot of the financial stuff while we were up there. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I got back, that's where my dad started to get really kind of overbearing. And I mean, rightfully so. I know what I did. But it's like with him, it was every single day, hours a day, <coughs> excuse me, hours a day. He'd come home from work, and then he would just talk to me, just about the same exact thing over and over and over and over and over again. And did, he get, did he get heated? He would get heated, but he... How about you? Did you get heated? No, I mean, I was... You know, I, I was always the person in the family where, like, my brother Cody would interrupt my dad when he was talking. Uh, my mom would interject and say, you can't be saying that or whatever. Mm -hmm. But for me, I would just sit there, and I would just let my dad talk so that he could say everything that he wanted to say. Um, and then if I saw that it was something that he wanted me to respond to, then I'd respond. But I would never be heated to him, sure. especially if I felt like I was in the wrong. Right. Um, to all this, you think you were in the wrong? I mean, yeah. To I mean, some, some extent? To some extent. You know, uh, spending that amount of money, it's idiotic to do that, you know, especially so when you're not making it. So 200000 Right. When was the last time that you and your dad did have, you know, a heated conversation? Uh, it would be Thursday? Thursday. Uh, because one of his rules was that I wasn't allowed to talk to the woman anymore that I had been talking to. Um, but I guess you could say behind the scenes, my mom would let me talk to her through her cell phone using Twitter. Um, and, you know, she would tell me, like, look, you got to keep it, you have to keep it just basic because if you say anything or if you entice anything or do anything like that, it might lead her to say something to, like, my dad or something like that. Because, How would she get in touch with him? Because apparently when I was in Cornerstone, my dad told her, because he had, like, hacked my computer or something like that, and then he found everything. He's an electronics guy like you and your brother? Except he's more of that, like, hacking level, like, able to do all that stuff. So he had found, you know, um, like, just the stuff that was related to her. Mm -hmm. And then... You know, he like he like erased my whole entire computer. He put a password on it, so it's like even when I came back up until Thursday, like I wasn't able to go onto my own computer to look at anything. I mean, he's treating you like a small child, right? And rightfully so. I mean, spending that amount of money, I was acting childish. I sure. I can kind of get it, but um. So yeah, anyways, on Thursday 
he had apparently found out that I was speaking to her again. Mm-hmm. And when I came back on the 4th, me, my mom picked me up from the Cornerstone place. And then me and my mom met my dad at California Pizza Grill or Kitchen in Waterford Lakes. Mm-hmm. And he had this list front and back on a piece of paper of all the rules, this is what's going to happen, this is why I'm acting the way that I'm going to act, I'm not going to be dad anymore, I'm going to be Chad. And I basically told him that I'm going to be I'm going to be present. I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to start trying to get jobs now. I told him what my plan was. Um, you know, it wasn't really my intention to continue talking to this woman, but it just kind of happened. Uh-huh. Um, and then because there was, like, that emotional connection, I guess you could say, uh, between her and me, like, I, I like, you know, it felt like, like, like a relationship. You know, I didn't want to just stop cold turkey on it. Um so he had apparently found out, and then one of, happy. Right, and one of the stipulations was that he told me at the dinner was, if you speak to this woman again, you're out of the house. I'm mm-hmm. kicking you out. You can pack up your shit, and then you're off my property. Mm-hmm. And then because of the way that he used to be, he had told me that basically if that happens, that if I ever step back onto his property, that he would kill me. So... You know, on Thursday, um, um, that all happened, and then I was in the process. I was getting all my stuff together. I was piecemealing it out to the car, and then, uh, you know, I had an interview on Friday. So I, I had to get my suit out to my car. I was trying to just get all of my necessities as best as I could from, you know, mm-hmm. a lifetime of living inside the house. Sure. And then... Um, um, my brother was working that night, and I think he was working like one of his long nights, but he ended up getting off early. And then I had met with my brother before he came home, just like in the neighborhood area. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, yeah. it was just on the uh, like the back side of the house, like along, I don't remember what that road's called, but it's like you take the bend where it has those two blinking lights, mm-hmm. and then it's just down that road a okay. ways. Not for Christmas. Is it before Christmas when you still turn the corner? I think so. I'm not. Sure. I, I think so. Well, it was. Yeah, it was just. It was just down that road. Okay. Um, and then I basically brought him up to speed, and he had told me that he was going to do whatever. What he time was that? You think? Uh, God, what time was that? What What time did you go to? Let me back up a second. I apologize. You, mom, and dad go to California Pizza Kitchen in Waterford at what time? Oh, that was all the way back on January 4th. Oh, you said Thursday. No, that wasn't Thursday. No, no, no. no that, was, that, was, that was when okay. I had come back from Cornerstone, gotcha. and he was giving me the, the rules. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so then do Thursday, then. That, we'll what happened? That. that Thursday that you meet with Cody down the street, this is this past Thursday? Yeah. Okay. Tell me, tell me about that. After you and your dad argued. After me and my dad had argued, okay. and he had told me, you know, this is how it's going to be, mm-hmm. and, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Um, so this is at the house this past Thursday. Yeah, thir- yeah. Okay. Because this is what now? Saturday? Saturday. So yeah. Fr- yeah, past Thursday, I guess you could still say it. Um, so then, yeah, I spoke with Cody. He told me about all that. He had given me his debit so that, because I mean, I don't have any money and I don't know where to go. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd never been out of the house on my own. Um, and then the last thing that I was told was just that, you know, basically, once again, that he'll take care of it because. This is Cody. This is Cody. What time, what time is this? Approximately. I'd say a little after ten, ten thirty ish at night. Thursday night. Thursday night. Okay. Um and then yeah, so then after that I just like stayed in that air in the vicinity area mm-hmm. for a number of hours and then I had remembered over some of the nights when I would work overnight and then I'd be able to come, like get off early, mm-hmm. that I could that the Publix on 50, on Colonial, the one that's by the like, tractor supply. 419, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That that Publix, it's like their guest Wi-Fi is always still active even when the store closes down. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go there because I have my Surface um, and I can, you know, check on my emails. I had to pull up the address to my interview because I don't have GPS. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I would, like, write all that stuff down and then um, I was basically just waiting in that parking lot until 
I had to leave to go to the interview. Um, and then, I mean, that was the last, because again, it's like, no cell phone service. Uh, I mean, email was literally like my only form of communication. And then, you know, yeah, I just, I didn't have any, I didn't, you know, I was, I went to the, the double tree because I was like, I can't just stay in my car again all night. Right. And um, who, how did you pay for that? I paid for it with my with my debit card. With your debit card? Yeah. Because okay. I think there was like the 400 or 300 and something dollars still left on it. Okay. Um, how much did you get there? The double tree? I think I got there at around 3 or 4 p.m. Yeah. Fr- Friday. Friday. And then, yeah, and then I was just, I mean, I would, like, go out to my car so I get, like, a bottle of water or something like that, or if I forgot something, you know, just, like, necessity-wise. Um, and then I was just there the whole night. Talk to Cody? Talk to Mom? Talk to No, I, I couldn't talk to anybody because I didn't have... But you had the phone in the room. Oh, yeah, I did have the phone in the room. <laughs> but... Did yeah, anybody come in the room? No, I, just, I didn't even honestly think about it because I was, I was, like, you know away from a place where I lived for 25 years or sure, something like that. Sure. I had never, you know, as embarrassing as it is, I'd never been on my own. Right. The longest period I'd ever been away from anybody is two weeks when we were up in Japan. So, I mean, yeah. But well, you had your brother with you, so. Right, right, so, yeah. So you had family sure. with you. But, yeah, I mean, so I guess I was waiting to see what would happen with this job because I was told I'd either be told Tuesday or Thursday. And then maybe I would try an outreach or something like that. Or the last time, um, you know, when it was like an issue where I didn't have my phone, like my brother would email me. Okay. So I was just thinking, oh, okay. Well, I mean, if anything, he knows the situation, he'll just email me. So I checked my email a few times last night, and then I just inevitably was able to, to go to sleep. Um, was it... Thursday night that your dad told you that if you talked to the girl that he would kick you out, or was that the conversation on the fourth at California? That, that was on. That was yeah on the fourth, so and then the he fourth. just okay. went through with it on Thursday. Okay. So so Thursday, you're home all day. Yes. With your mom, she works at home. Correct. Yeah. Your dad's at work. What's his normal work hours? Uh, he works until. I think he had to go in early that day, because mm-hmm. uh, he had to start like doing overtime or something like that, mm-hmm. and. He normally works, though, from, like, 5 or 6 in the morning to, I think he gets home between, like, 5.30 and 6 at night or something like that. What time did he get home that day? Uh, he got home at, like, 5.30. 5.30. 5.30, 5.45, one of those two. Okay. Um, Comes at, were you there when he came in? Yes. Okay. Well, describe your dad normal come in. Uh, when my dad normally comes in, he'll come in, he'll look into the uh, the living room, which is, like, there's the kitchen, and then there's the living room where it's got, like, the long couch and whatnot that's inside, mm-hmm. and then there's the TV right there. Okay. So he'll normally come in through there, and then he'll talk, or he'll ask his questions, or he'll do... Where, you, where were you at when he came in? I was just in there. I was just watching... Uh, in the virtual reality, where, the, where you said you had that set up? Right, right. right. Okay. Yeah, I was just watching... And that's in what room? The living room. The living room. Yeah. Okay. I was just watching YouTube at that time. Just okay. like, Did Dad talk to you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's where, because uh, he had, I don't know how he found out, but he had apparently found out, and then... Found out what? That I was talking to, you were still talking to, to the woman, yeah. And then uh, he came in, and then he asked me, in a calmer state, I guess you could say, like... Basically, the the leading question of, you know, why do you think we're about to have this conversation? Giving me, I guess, that opportunity to be honest and truthful to maybe tone it down a little bit. I, of course, did what I always did, where I kind of didn't admit to it. Uh Um, And then he he came out and he told me that I had been doing that. He had proof. Yeah. Um, Have an argument? Yeah. And then, you know, he got... Just, he had kind of reverted back to the way that he was when we were younger, mm-hmm. where, you know, he kind of, you know, pulled me up from the couch, and then he was yelling at me to pack my shit up and just get out of the house, that he was the one who had to be the hammer, and that, you know, why am I making him have to go through this, and all this other kind of stuff. Okay. So, you know, basically I had... So um, he's becoming violent. I mean, like, he's like the way you described right, it when you were, right. when you were, when you were, when you were kids. Right. What do you do? 
Um, like I said, he pulled me up from the couch just by, like, the shirt that I was wearing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after that, he was basically just having that yelling where it was kind of, kind of like cracking. You know, like his voice would either crack or he would just, he was basically just yelling at that point and monitoring. Where's like, your mom? My mom was in her office. Okay. Because. Did she, did, and I'm sorry to cut you off. Does mom have, like, an office hours? Like, she would get up and do her work all day, and at a certain time, I'm done doing my office work, and I'm doing my family stuff. Not really. Okay. Uh, so I mean, work there all the time. Right. She would, I think the, the major thing that she would do is she would, like, cook dinner. Okay. And then after that, um, she would go back into her office. What time was dinner, usually, generally? Between, like, 7. Like, I guess usually around 7. 7, 7.30 is when we'd usually have dinner. Most nights. Did you guys already have dinner that night? No, no. I think, what was she going to make? I think she was going to make something with, like, chicken or something like that, stir fry or something like that, okay. because Cody was working late, so she didn't want to make something where, because my dad would always buy meals that were for four, mm -hmm. so he, we didn't want to pull out anything where there would be leftovers or sure. something like that. So, but she hadn't uh, started making it yet. I think she was defrosting the chicken. And that was about what time? Uh, what time? I think she took those out like at four or something like that in the afternoon. And at this time, the the argument with dad is at what time? The argument with dad is like six, six thirty or something. Six thirty. Yeah. Okay. Um. You have your argument and you pack your stuff. I have my argument and then I'm packing my stuff. I'm you know taking it out to the car. It took me like a couple hours to get as much as I could, just kind of out into there. Um. And then, yeah, it's like mom's kind of just staying out of it to a certain degree because she knows, like, how dad can be. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I was, and that's just pretty much where I was just kind of, like, waiting. So you wait outside. Did anybody call Cody and tell him what's going on? No, no I mean, not that I know of. Okay. And how did you know to meet Cody down the street? It's because... Uh, my mom had actually come and told me mm -hmm. that, you know, she again, she was trying to bridge the gap, and then before I actually physically left, I had told my mom that, you know, I'm going to be close, I'm going to be local, I'm just going to be, like, down the street. Mm -hmm. and then, so you left? So I left. Okay. And then what time she, do you think you left about? Oh, God. If it's 6.30, the argument started, I'd, how long do you think before you left? I'd say, like, 9 or 9.30 or so. And then, uh, yeah, so then, I mean, yeah, that's, because I, I guess, I, mom I think it's because, then? I think it's because, um, like, Cody had called the house, and then my mom picked up. And then he was just letting, like, how we would normally do, where, like, I got off early because he was supposed to work till like, 11 or something like that. But he came home early. And then, yeah, he was able he to come home early because of the fight, you think? I don't, I don't, I don't know, honestly. But uh, he had, I mean, like, that week, even on the days that he was working until 3, he would come home at, like, noon or 1 or something that week, so maybe it was just a slow week. But apparently that had happened, and then my mom was able to... to Tell him what was going on. Right, and then she told me. Um, did Cody have the gun affinity you have? He did. He liked guns like you did. Right, yeah. Did he keep any guns on him? I think Cody had his, um, he had his carry, his okay. pistol. Okay. And then he... What, what did he keep normally carry? It was like a, a Smith & Wesson M9 shield or armor or... Core, core something. Okay. And um, then the only other gun that he had was his clay shooting shotgun. Okay. Did your dad carry any guns? My dad, to my knowledge, he has like two SKSs or something like that, and then he has a Glock something. Did he carry the Glock with him normally? Normally, no. No? Okay. What else happened? What else happened? Mm -hmm. uh, then after, after, after I had met with Cody, then that's where... You know, I was, again, just kind of staying around that area, and then I just went to, to the Publix. And then, to my knowledge, I mean, that was, like, that was the last interaction that I had with my, the three members of my family was, was that. Um, was about what time? Last time, well, last time you saw your mom was what time, approximately? Last time I saw my mom, um, 
I'm just trying to think. Uh, last time that I saw my mom was God. When did I say that I met Cody? Or when, when I, I when don't Co think you Cody time. stopped by? I it was it was time. like 45 minutes before that. Okay, so so when Cody called the house, you said your mom told him about the argument. Right. Had and you told when you left, you said you told your mom you were going to be in the area. Right. How then does Cody now know where to meet you, or it's if he's going to meet you? Yeah, it's because that's that's when my mom had come out to where I said that I was going to be on that road somewhere, okay. and then she was able to do that, and then I guess that's how she knew like where to. I don't know if she talked to Cody again or if she was able to do that, but then she was able to like pinpoint that area. Okay, so this would have been late at night, right? Eight, nine, ten o'clock somewhere like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So dinner was over. You guys already had dinner. We hadn't had dinner because of the whole argument that was happening. Okay. So, yeah, it never, I don't think, yeah, the chicken never got past just being in the wrappers over where she would always defrost it. So, you leave, go on your way, Cody goes home. Right. And you had no contact with him since then. Right. Um, I just want to make sure that we're not missing anything okay. before, before we can close. Just a second, Greg. You, 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 you take this? No, no, this is I'm, a good I'm time right now to take it. Take I'm good. I'm good. Well, bathroom break anything? No, I feel fine. Like sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, just water. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank sure. you.
<laughs> I need to bathroom. Oh. I wanted to point out a picture of for Christmas because we're not aware. I, I'm oh, not wow. familiar with the area, so. So we're going to go back and talk again about this because it's kind of important to me about <laughs> Cody and you meeting that night. Right. So then that that night, which was Thursday, Thursday, yes. Thursday, Thursday night, night, you meet Cody. Um, because, and, and did he ever tell you why he left work early? No, no. I mean, he was, I, I'd assume that it was just because he had been allowed to leave early. He'd been allowed to leave early. Okay. So here's, I, I, I think this is the blinking lights there. So this is, to, to me, this is okay. 419 left on Lake Mills, right? Left on Fort Christmas. Okay. Um, where would you say you met Cody on Fort Christmas? So wait, is this is this that other like neighborhood? I think maybe I'm wrong. I think it comes this w this way is is 419. This is this or is all like. Side? No, I think I think this is. I think this is up by the hitching post. You come up, yeah. you make a right on Fort Christmas. This is where the blinking lights are. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, this goes into Salt or uh, Ticket Downs, right? Is right here. Then this is the circle. Is this where you live at? Where, where do you live at? If this is if this is like the entrance to take it down, yeah, then yeah, I live like. Okay, yeah. okay. so here's so the, there's blinking light there's blinking lights right here, so people don't run up at his house. I think that's what it was. Two red lights. Oh yeah, that's on the dude's fence. Yeah. yeah. Then there's those sir. There's those two yellow arrow okay. blinking ones at the corner. The corner. So right. these are blinking lights here. All right. So then where do you and Cody meet? Like way down this road, like yeah, further past on that road. So past, d does this dead end anywhere? I don't think so. I think it like it literally goes into Bethlehem. I think goes into Bethlehem and then it goes and then if you keep going it, which was the way that I inevitably took it, uh, where it'll dump you out onto 50, and then I okay. came up 50 to go back to the Publix. Right. Lot. So here are the blinking lights. How far down do you think you met? Half mile, mile? Uh, I mean, a, a significant ways. I mean, just an approximate. I mean, I would say it was probably over a mile. Is this somewhere you and him have met before? We know, uh, like you know, where that if you're on this road, the intersection where it's like it intersects with another another road, and then it's got like a guardrail or something like that right there. Mm -hmm. It was still past that area, okay. but it was it was close to that intersection. Okay, yeah. was it in the Roadway, like off the roadway off the road. or in? Off, yeah, just off the road. Just off the road. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not familiar. I, I can't even. It's like it's, it's it's back there in the the country. So you and Cody meet, right? And it's approximately what time? And I know it's. Not, yeah, I'm not going to the exact minute. What time do you think you met? Like ten thirty. Ten thirty. Something like that. How long did you talk to him for? Only about ten minutes or so. And what was the conversation? conversation was basically that he was brought up to speed, you know, and that he would take care of it. He was brought up to speed by what? He was brought up to speed on, like, why I'm why I'm out here. Who brought him up to speed? My mom. Oh, so she talked to him? Yeah. He told you that mom had, had talked to him? Right. I just, I since just, the I, argument or when? Since the, since I had left. So I you'd, just, left about, you'd left the house approximately when? I left the house at, like... When did I leave the house? Dark. It was dark. Um, it was after it was after nine p.m. that I just don't remember. So between nine and approximately ten thirty, right. you leave. Right. Go down to uh, sit it, it on uh, Fort Christmas. Fort Christmas. Cody comes and talks to you about ten minutes. At some point, your mom has spoken to Cody based on what the conversation you have with him, correct? Correct, yeah. And she told him what had happened between you and your dad. Right. Okay. Do you think that's why Cody left work? I mean, Did I could say because, he because, because why he left work? No, he never said why he left work, but in my mind, I was just thinking, oh, he had been let off work early like three, three times already this week. So ten, I was ten, just like. 10, 15 minutes you talked to Cody. Right. What's he driving? Uh, he drives a 96, or 97, 97 Honda Accord. Okay. Yeah. Um, you have a conversation, and he leaves to go home? Right. And you leave to go where? And then I stay in that general area, just so that if anything happens, somebody, like, knows where I am. Okay, like how long do you stay there? I stayed there for... 
I mean, like, a couple hours, I would say. Just that same area road. where you were talking like, about? Like, I would go, like, kind of just up and down that road a little bit just so my car isn't just, like, sitting there. Mm -hmm. But for the most, yeah, I mean, I was staying in that general area, and then I decided to go. To Publix? To Publix. Which was about what time? Like, between, like, midnight and one, I think. Yeah. And you go to Publix midnight one, and how long did you stay there until? I stayed there until, like, seven. I think in the car. morning. Well, as best as I could, yeah. Right. I mean, I was never comfortable sleeping in the car. Yeah, Where but did you park at? Yeah. Uh, on, it's like on the on the side of it where, uh, like, there's the back end of Publix where like all the shipments and stuff come in, and then you go around that corner, and then there's that line. On the pub on the Publix end of it, or the tractor farm supply end. Publix end. So there's some parking there around that side. Yeah. I'm familiar. I used to live that in, yeah. in that area. There's a side parking. Right. If you come up forward, you make the left, you go in front of Publix, the ice cream place is out front. Right. But you're on the side of the building. Right. Did any deputies, anybody ever come by, or no. any, anybody that worked there? Nobody. Any delivery trucks? I saw delivery trucks, like, in the morning. In the morning. I, yeah. And 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock-ish? Between 7 and 7.30, yeah, I leave. And go where? And then that, I just drive over to where my uh, my interview. And I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just not understanding. Where where was that at? Uh, off Lee Vista. Off over. Lee Vista. So how did you get there? I just drove there. Which way? Your direction. Oh, right. oh. Um, what road did you use? Colonial to 408, and then I got off on Goldenrod, the Goldenrod exit, mm -hmm. and then I took Goldenrod all the way down to the Lee Vista mm -hmm. road. Make a right? Right. Go back towards um, 436? Yes. Okay. Do you have an e-pass? I do. You do. Okay. So your e-pass would have probably hit you at... The Dean Road, maybe? Yeah. And I don't think there's a toll, if I'm not mistaken, at Goldenrod, is there? No, there's not. I don't think there's yeah. one. Yeah. So, so you work your way on, on, si on surface roads all the way down Lee Vista and go. And what was the name of the company again? I'm sorry, I just I don't think we um, it. It was, it's Acreta. Acreta? Yeah. How do you think it's spelled? A C C R E D A. Let me see if I can find it. Or it's Acreto. It's one of those two. But it's, if you type in that and then, like, scripts, it'll give you, like, the other name that the company has. Because then they were also just, like, bought from Cigna. So they're also called Cigna now. Scripts, like? Yeah, like like a doctor script. S-C-R-I-P-T-S. Express scripts. That's, that's the actual, I think, okay. name of the infusion group. But they've kept their name Acrita or Acrito. Acrito, Acrito um, Express scripts. Let's see. I saw them. Why are you looking that? The 6272 Levis to Boulevard sound right? Yes. Yeah. 62. Yeah, I remember it being a 62. Yeah, I'm sure looking just up at my phone here. We'll see. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. This is not good. Look about right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Express scripts. Yeah. So it's going to be 6272 Lee Vista Boulevard, Ex and it's called Express Scripts there on their name. When I put a, it said Acredo Express Scripts. That's not right. Okay. Yeah. So you went and had an interview with them. Um, I had an interview with the two managers, uh, Erica and Terry. Erica and Terry. Females or males? Females. Okay. Two females. What did Erica look like? Uh, Erica is, I think, like maybe 30 or something like that, and she's got like blonde hair. Like fake eyelashes, uh, I mean white, you know, kind of just look like young, standard, small, build woman. Okay. How about the other girl? Terry is, I think, kind of into her 40s. She's got like auburn, straight hair, uh, white again, and um, yeah, you know, she was also just kind of like a standard, slim, build person. Okay. Uh, what did you wear to get? What did you wear to the interview? I wore my uh, suit, uh, it's just like a men's warehouse gray suit. Sure. Like uh, brown shoes. Okay. Um, and you said the interview was from what time? What time? And I'm, I'm sorry to repeat. No, no, no. no, no. It, it, my interview was scheduled for ten in the morning, but, but you got there early. Right, because I was told that I had to print out like my resumes and my other things, but then I wasn't able to the night before. Mm -hmm. So I had brought my Surface thing that I could print it out earlier. So I got there at nine. Mm -hmm. Uh, or like maybe eight. Where'd you print out that? I actually didn't. I mean, they said that they couldn't, but they already had copies of okay. it, so I was able. I, I didn't have to worry about that. So you had the interview, and it started approximately what time? Like nine forty. Nine forty, and went to about when? Uh, I think it was about an hour. 
So like 10.30, 10.40 or so. They didn't offer you a job. I said they may have something coming for it. It seemed like promising, but then they said that they had one more person to interview on Tuesday or Wednesday of this coming week. Mm-hmm. So, But they said that I would hear something from them regardless, like Tuesday or Thursday. I want to jump back just a second. When you left the house, right. what were you wearing? Uh, when I left the house, I was just wearing, um, like, my, uh, like, black pants, mm-hmm. and then just, uh... Jeans or just, like, just like a workout pants kind of deal with one? No, just, yeah, just, like, just, like, workout pants. Workout pants, okay. Yeah. And then I, um, I just had a black shirt on, and then, uh, was I wearing a jacket? And I think just, like, one of my sweaters or jackets sweater. or something. And you changed where to go to the, uh... In the parking lot exactly. at the at the the place. I suppose. Okay. You go to the the interview. Let's say you're there till maybe eleven o'clock. Right. Approximately. Where'd you go from there? From there, um, I pretty much just drove around. I was thinking of like passing by the house, but I I inevitably decided against it. And then I was I thought that I had to do like a skills check off for the same exact things, and I had switched into into just like scrubs. Okay. Um, but then that didn't end up needing to be done today, or uh, on the same day. Uh-huh. And then I was pretty much just driving around. I ended up going to Waterford, or I, I had gone back to the Publix area at one point, mm-hmm. um, because I wanted to see if I could um, get my phone service back. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I was told that I'm not like a, a registered user. Did you go like to a phone store somewhere? Yeah. Which one? The Verizon. Where the Verizon, at? which is right there in the same place. In the in the um, Publix Plaza. Right. It's like by tra- Tractor Farms Plaza. It's there? right next to the Zaxby's. It's where the family dentistry. Oh yeah, right. they built a new building up there. Didn't right. They? It's like, like a little little strip, uh, four or five store there. Yeah. Okay. No, exactly. Where you're talking. Where you're turning to go to Corner Lakes Middle School. Right. Okay. So, so you I there to talk to somebody. Yeah, I tried to get my phone service back. And then guy or girl. It was a guy. What did he look like? Um, he was a young guy, like maybe in his early twenties. Mm-hmm. He had black hair. I think he had like a goatee. Okay. Um, what time was that approximately? Uh, I think that was that was the first place that I went to when I came back. So if I got out of there around eleven, maybe like twelve or twelve thirty or something like that in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. I think. Okay. Couldn't get the phone because why? Because I was told that I wasn't uh, a registered user because it was under my dad's name sure. and everything. And then um, I was told that I was a registered user and then that, that basically they can't do anything unless he gives the sign off. Right. The, the, the account holder has to approve of it. Right, right. Okay. Didn't work. It didn't work. And then you went where? And then after that, I went back... Uh, and then I think I just sat in my car for a little while because I was just thinking, okay, well, how am I going to do this with everything that just happened? And um, from there, that's where I think I decided that I was going to maybe drive by the house. Did you go drive by? Did I? I didn't drive by the house. I like was starting to go there down that Fort Christmas road, and then I was just like, I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it because, as okay. far as I know, it's like. You know, Dad's probably at work. I don't know if Cody works again today. And, you know, just like with everything that had been When happened. you drove down there? Yeah. See anything strange? No. I, I had seen, um, I had just seen, like, a couple of cars, like, pass by me, but... What do you mean, cars? Like, just standard, like, just a little bit of traffic. Okay. But then apart from that, no, I mean, nothing... How close do you get to the house? Uh, I'd say, I mean, like, a couple of miles. A couple the, of miles. Okay. Yeah. You leave there... And you go where? And then after I choose not to do that, then I go. I go uh, back towards the Goldenrod Express Scripts area because I thought that I had to do the skills mm-hmm. checkoff thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I'm going back that whole like Goldenroddy area. Right. Um, I think I missed my exit, and then I had to get off at, uh... Did you go 408 again? Yeah. Expressway? Yeah. Okay, so you're going back and forth on the 408. Right. Okay. And then I missed the Goldenrod exit, and then I, like, don't even think to get off on Semarine. So then I end up, like, needing to go off on Crystal Lake Drive, mm-hmm. and then I connect up with 50, and then I just go all the way back to the whole, the, the Goldenrod Road. 
Right. But um, um, then I stop off and I just I see if if there was like any email updates or anything like that. And then there check was, your email. Yeah. And nothing. And then there was nothing. So then I was like, oh crap, it's not like today. But you've got to pay for things. You've got some money. Right. In your account. Right. You had Cody's card tonight. Right. Let me say. Do you still have your dad's card? Yes. Okay, so I had that. Okay. Do you use any of them? I had used Cody's card to pay for one of my bills that was outstanding. Uh, it was just one of those from that site. It was just like a, a bill that had backed up. How much up was that? There. It was five ninety nine ninety nine. Okay. Um, Cody, know you're doing that. Yeah. He said it's okay to do that. He said to use this to like survive until things can get figured out because he knows that I only have you know a few hundred dollars in my name. He told you that that night that you right. could use his card and pay off what needed to be paid off? To, yeah, to pay, he, he said to use it for, like, necessity. Did he give it to you? Yes. He gave it to you, so here, take this and just yes. do whatever. But that was normal for him, though. He was, yeah, he was, because he had always... Part, he was putting, putting most of your bills right. in the time. Right. Okay. So then after the realization that I didn't have to do any skills checkoff, then after that, I go... Then after that... Oh, yeah, then after that, that's where I go to Waterford. And then at Waterford... You stop anywhere over there? I go into Panera, because okay. I think that I'm going to get something to eat. About what time? Um, this was, like, right before I went to the to the hotel, so it was, like... After that... Oh, yeah, then after that, that's where I go to Waterford. And then at Waterford... You stop anywhere over there? I go into Panera, because okay. I think that I'm going to get something to eat. About what time? Um... This was like right before I went to the to the hotel, so it was like one thirty, two o'clock in the afternoon, maybe. Okay. Um, and then in there, you know, I I think about getting something to eat, but then I don't really want to use like the other cards to pay for something, and then I know that I only have a little bit, but then I'm gonna have to like sleep somewhere. And again, I'm trying to use like my money for that type of mm -hmm. stuff. Trying to so then, yeah, so then I'm only in Panera for like. 10 minutes or something like that. And then I end up leaving from there, and then that's where I go to the double tree, and then that's where I checked in. And then I was at the double tree all night. Did you go anywhere? Leave? I only came out of the double tree to, I think, get like a water bottle out of my car and to get, like, oh yeah, to get my, uh, like my razor out just in case I needed to shave or something like that. In your room? What's in your room back at the at double tree? At the double tree, it's my leather, like, just shoulder bag. Uh -huh. And then it has my other small leather um, shoulder bag, I guess you could call it, but it's like really, it's like a satchel. Okay, what's up? What's in it? What's in this bag? In the satchel, it's just got some batteries, some protein bars, um, just some like ration type food. And then in my uh, big carry, it's got just like some clothes, standard clothes. Mm -hmm. It had my, like, all the electronic chargers and whatnot that I could get, just sure. kind of, like, grabbing and putting in there. And then it has my Surface, my cell phone, and uh, my iPad. Yeah. And then uh, it's got, like, some, some like, bills, like, some previous bills. Does, does, your, does your cell phone have a lock on it? Yes. What's the lock? Uh, 2112. Two one one two for the lock on the cell phone. How about the iPad? The iPad, I don't know. I never turned it on. Oh, you've never even used it. No, no, no. I, I, I've, I've used it before, but I never turned it on since I got it back. Because my dad was like keeping all of that stuff like locked and sure put in somewhere. Yeah. Slept there last night. Talked to anybody? Uh, I just I messaged the girl that I'd been talking to so on Twitter. Yeah. On Twitter, so you have to pay for it. Right, right. Did she right. respond back to you? Uh, I think once. Like one or two responses. What's what's your Twitter address? I'm it's sorry, I, I'm no, not no, a Twitter no. person. No, it's just it's just Grant A. It's just what it is. It's just Grant A. What the space? Grant space A. I think if you type in Grant space A, it'll it'll like pull up my picture. Okay. But it's like one of those Grant space A eight four nine five thousand. Yeah, it's got like nine numbers after. Okay, it. I'm sorry, just, I'm not a Twitter person. I don't know. Oh no, I don't know that much about it. Sorry, when you get uh, at our age, the, 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 some of these things have passed you by. And oh, no, yeah, that's fine. Fine. I appreciate you explaining to me. So the Surface and iPad have no passwords? The, the Surface, my computer, has a password, but it's, again, the pin is just 2112. You just use a home address? Yeah. So yeah. I'm easy to remember. Yeah. Okay. And then, but with the iPad, I don't know if it has a password on it, because I, I never turned that on again, 
uh, once I got it back. Okay. So you stay there right. and wake up this morning. Right. Nobody else in the room. Nobody else in the Rented room. in your name. Rented in my name. Okay. You come out and do what? You come out of the room today to go where? Where are you going? I was going to go down because I, I had, like, one more bottle of water in my car, mm -hmm. and uh, I had just finished eating, like, just a little granola bar mm -hmm. thing, so I was like, I'm just going to go down and get my bottle of water. And you found what when you go outside? All the police, police officers. officers right there, yeah. Okay. Do you, real quick, do you know if there was a password on the iPad prior to your dad taking it? Uh, Yeah, but it was just... It, they were always like two and one two. Okay. Was whatever. Everything was the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, here we got a better map just to. Okay. And I can't see that. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm blind. Like Mills. Okay. We've marked off there just for ease, and it's, it's not. There's your house. Okay. Here's the guy with the fence with the lights there. Right. And you went down Fort Christmas going into Orange County. Right. And I would suspect this is about somewhere around a mile, give or take, okay. from your development. Do you remember a cross street or anything that it was near? Or it or? was, it, I don't know if it's on here. Yeah, it would be Because it would be a road that's mm -hmm. like coming in in this direction, where it's a like... A side road or like somebody's private road? No, it's like a side road. It, it's, it's like a road that inevitably collects back up with 417. And it's like well, it's just I think I think what you're saying that road it should um, come back to um, 50 if I'm not mistaken I think there's it, there's a split where it splits off and if you go left it'll wind up oh yeah, it was it was before it, that yeah it was before that split where if you take that road, you, you know you know what yeah, I'm talking about but it was before that it's where there's another road that's intersecting that has like a metal guardrail like a long metal guardrail. Um, and it's just like a little, I don't know, I can't really describe it. It's okay. like, like it should be a road that's coming in from this direction. I just have no idea. I mean, unless it's like one of these that's just like right off the map or something like that. Okay, here is, I think this goes back out, if I'm not mistaken, goes back out to where... Lake Pickett. Lake Pickett Road goes all the way from Percival. It comes out and crosses 419, truly a road 419. It goes back through some developments, some new developments, winds its way around, and kind of looks like that. Does that look about right? Fort Christmas, before that road comes in, it's a, it's a good road. Yeah. There's a stop sign that way. So probably you think right around there before you get back into the Bithlo, the actual right. Bithlo right. proper area? Yeah. Could that have been it? Like right around, yeah, it was right around it here. Was close to there that was there a church right there? The Catholic Diocese of Orlando is has got some property there. No, I mean all that I can remember is just like because the right here, fields and all that. Because stuff. right here, I know it's kind of hard to see, is where you live at. Right. Is right. I think right there. Yeah. Salton's right there. So then, yeah, that other right. road comes down. You say where the lights are down that way. And the only real road that comes down and goes back to the east yeah, would yeah. be that so right there. It so it's probably well, that. Yeah, I did not know but that it looks like a decent sized road. It wasn't right. just like a little driveway right. or somebody's right. private road. And then so it winds through. So yeah. it would be Lake Pickett. Lake Pickett. Four, highway, what's it, 420? 420. So somewhere in that intersection. Somewhere, you yeah. Better. And then when you left Cody, what did he say he was going to go do? Cody said that he will take care of it. Take care of what? Just the situation that was at hand with whatever he had been updated with from my mom. Did he tell you what he was updated? He had told me that, he had told me the reason why, like, I had been kicked out. Um, but he really didn't give me that much dialogue, like, about that situation. You know, he was, he was miffed a little bit because, you know, he had just gotten off work and now he has to go deal with this. And then after that, I mean, it was just, he gave me the debit card to say, you know, to use this in case of emergencies. And then, uh, I mean, that was pretty much it because I don't know if, like, he had already said that he was on his way home or if there were expectations, like, for a time with him for making it home. But what was your demeanor? Like, what did Cody see you as? Like, were you like scared? Upset? Yeah, you like, so I was scared because, I mean, like I said, it's the first time that I had been out of the house. You know, so you were scared of what? Being on your own? Right. Or did your father say or do anything to scare you? He had threatened me that if I stepped foot back on his property, not the house, but if I stepped foot back on his property, that he would kill me. 
and like he had he said those specific words yeah did he, you tell that to cody that your no. father told you that no i didn't so you're afraid of him oh yeah you yeah. you are actually afraid that he could kill you yeah and it's also because like in the past like two weeks before i got kicked out my dad was going through like a lot of episodes where he was losing his temper a lot, yelling a lot, especially when me and Cody weren't at the house. And um Who's he yelling at? My mom. So was he being violent to your mom? Yeah, like I think physically or just emotionally? Both. Put his hands on her. He had bruised her left arm by grabbing it. Mm -hmm. Um and then apparently she had said that on one of the nights that um they were in the kitchen together, and then he was, like, throwing food at her and then banged her head against the wall a couple times. So, and I'm not, let me speak bad of your dad, but he's kind of a violent guy. He's, yeah, I mean. You have a reason to be afraid of him. And then the thing that I was getting to was that apparently my mom was so scared at one point, because it had been a while since he had been like this, mm -hmm. that she had taken, like, a couple or a number of voice memos on her phone whenever he would, like, come in and then start... Like, she knew that, you know, something like he was going to start to get upset. Mm -hmm. And that on multiple occasions, um, he had told her that if you... Or he had told her that, basically, if I fuck up... Sorry for the language, but if, that if, I, if I screw up, he's going to kill me, and then he's going to kill her. He said those specific because words. Because he blames everything that happens negatively with me and with Jason, not with Cody, but with me and Jason on her because we're her so, favorites. So you have a reasonable belief in your mind that your dad could, could hurt you. Yes. He could hurt your mom. Yes. He could baby hurt Jason. Yes. He's a violent guy. I'm sorry. I've been this a long time. He sounds like a violent guy. Yeah. Quick to lose his temper with him over minuscule stuff. Minuscule stuff. Yeah. I get the point. He's upset about the amount of money. I do right, get that. Right. But physically, he's abusive. Yes. And it's kind of embarrassing as you're an adult male right now. He's been abusive to you for years, has he not? Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 more more mentally over the but, course. But it has been to the point where you, as a 29 year old male, right, 29? 29. That you're afraid that your father could kill you. Yeah. And, I mean, again, it's like, you know, at, at the house, I mean, I have, like, no access to anything. So, I mean, it's literally just, like, me. And, you know, I, so, like you I told you. You access to anything. You mean what? Like, you know, anything to defend myself. You know, like, I the guns sold in the house? all my guns. You sold does, does Cody have guns in the house? He does, but they're, like, locked up somewhere. Do you have guns in the house? Again, yeah, but they're locked up somewhere. And you don't have access to them? I don't even have a house key. Um, I don't have a house key. I don't have any keys to the, the the doors inside the house. All I had was my car key. That's all that he gave me. And that night when you argued with your father and he said he grabbed your shirt and pulled you off the couch, did he do anything else to you physically? No. No, he didn't, like, pursue it anymore. He was just... Did you tell Cody that he acted that no. way towards you? No, I didn't. Cody had no idea that there was a heated, physical, just the argument that you needed to get right. out because you were talking to this girl. Right. Um, we've come and talked to you. Okay. You rode up here voluntarily with us to talk to us. Why do you think we're having this conversation? I honestly don't know, but I'm pretty freaked out at this point because, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I know, like, how the situation was when I left, and... You know, I thought that it was weird to begin with that I hadn't gotten any communication whatsoever. I mean, like I like I had told you, my brother, Cody, the last time um, when I was away from the house, that he was the one who outreached to me sure. via email because, again, I didn't have my phone or anything like that. So, I mean, I thought that it was weird, but I had just been kind of putting it out of my mind, thinking, okay, you had to go to work or they're when, busy or something. When you, when you were in your room, the hotel room, hotel hanging room. out, watching TV? No, I didn't turn on the TV. I had on just like music uh, on the in the background, just kind of helped me go to sleep. Are you sure about that? Because the hotel, it's weird, and I didn't I didn't know this. I used to travel a lot for work. They can tell because of the the TV every channel you've been on when the TV gets turned off. Because I guess they have a problem. Yeah, I guess they have a problem uh, with people stealing from that. Oh wow! So those things are well monitored. Even I though you know, that looks like a cheap 
Yeah, yeah. I, I never even touched the TV remote. I, gotcha. didn't, I didn't turn on that TV at all. I was just using my service to like watch YouTube initially, and then, um, um, and then you I were still using the service to, to to check things. Right. So yeah. there'll be a history of everywhere you went on it. Right. Yeah. Okay. As a as a child, we're told the truth always is the best thing to do. Correct. Correct. You agree with me? Yeah. And accidents happen, and things in the heat of the moment, things happen that we wish hadn't happened. But we make, I, I do it myself sometimes. My kids will make me so aggravated, I'll snap at them and then walk away and say, Wow, I wish I would not have done that. That was not very adult of me to, to snap at my child for something. Yes, they're wrong, but I should be the adult and not snap at them. Right. Tell me what you think, because I, I can tell by I've done this for a long, long time, and I read people the way they act and the way they, they talk to me and the way they answer questions. There's something you want to tell us. I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your body language and just your the way you act. Now's the time. Now's the time. If there's something you want to get off your chest and give us an explanation of what's bothering you, now is the exact time to do it. And I, I, I'm giving you that opportunity. Um, right now to tell me some something you want to get off your chest. It's there. I can see it in your face. I can see it in your eyes. You're upset about that night. You're upset about. You're upset about. You've been that since we've talked to you. I can see there's something been bothering you. Even though I don't know you from Adam's house, can't you see things in people that something really bothered this guy? It's not that you know I spent a bunch of money I shouldn't have on this girl. So be it. You did. It's over with. Money can be made back. Something's bothering you. I'm just worried about what. Is all transpiring from this? I, I think at this point right now, to be honest with you, Grant, you know what it is. Um, it's, it's in your eyes. Your, your eyes is, is the view to your soul, and it's, it's in your eyes. And it sounds stupid, and people don't believe it. Like I told you out there in the car, did I not tell you? You may not like what I say, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth every time that I can walk in, walk in, in front of anybody in God and say, I don't care. I told him the truth. And we usually know answers before we ask it. Right. I, I knew, we, me and, and Eva knew everything before before um, we asked you the questions. Now's the time to, to come to Jesus, be honest, because you're holding something back. I can see it in your eyes. People don't believe that the police will help you, but we are actually here to help you with issues you may have. Um, I think something happened, and... You don't want to tell us, but right now is the time to get it off your chest. And I really wish you would because it, it will make you feel better in the end. I, I genuinely don't have anything else that I can say about the night or, you know, the, the period of time afterwards. There's only, there's only one opportunity to make that, that good impression. And to if we've done something we shouldn't have done, you fess up there. You get caught your hand in a cookie jar, you, you, you do it. Now, so is there anything else that happened at the house that you didn't tell us that you've left out or we haven't asked you that would be of importance? Um, or during the time that you drove around for those few hours, did you ever really go back to the house that you haven't told us about? Something that, something that happened that caused you to defend yourself. No, because again, it's like I didn't have, I didn't have any means to defend myself. I mean, I didn't. Well, we know from talking to you that there's there's weapons in the house. Right. We know that to be to be to be a fact. Something happened that caused you to defend yourself. Whether you had anything or not, you found something to defend yourself with. I can't tell you everything. I'm not going to tell you everything. But something happened, whether your dad blew up on you, threatened you, physically harmed you, or hurt you, something happened that caused an altercation. Uh, and I, I didn't do anything at the house besides get my stuff together and take it out to my car. And that's, I mean, and I mean, I didn't, besides that one thing that I told you guys where I was going down the road to come back maybe... Besides that, I mean, I didn't... Because you saw nothing that was out of the ordinary. No. Did in it, did the work Christmas area or 419 area? No, I mean... Did you even get up to the uh, Lake Mills Fort Christmas area where that guy's blinking lights are? 
No, no. I, when I came back, I didn't come up to there. There, there is. And you're, you're, you're a better electronics than I am. I'm going to admit that. There's a digital footprint, and there's ways to see things that we know that don't make sense. Even though your phone may not have service, there's still issues with the phone. Right. And it was on you the entire time yeah. when you left the house yeah. until you were in touch with law enforcement. I, right. I can track places you've been. And I know where you have been, and I know what time you've been there, and what everything you're telling me isn't just copacetic and doesn't add up because because there's what I think, what you think, what she thinks, and then there's things that are hard facts that you can't manipulate. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think something happened at the house based on of my knowledge right now, and you're afraid to say it. You're afraid to to come back and say that I was a victim. I was hurt. I had something that happened there that I don't want you to tell because it's something that may be embarrassing or not good, but I know a lot more than, than I can let on right now. And things you're not telling me, I can't help you if you won't let me help you. So what? where's the missing piece? What have we missed here? I mean, when I, uh, when I had come back that other time, I crossed in front of the the red the dude's fence, the red blinking lights ones. Um, what time was that? I can't, I can't remember. That was that was Friday during the day when you said you were going to come back. Right, yeah. Okay. But it was after you did your interview. Correct. Okay. Yeah. If you did that, you would have seen something, and there would be something out of the ordinary that you would have seen. If you passed that, you passed something out of the ordinary. What was it? I saw, like, a news van, and then... Uh, I don't think there there might have been like a cop car there. There was like traffic being being human done. nature. Human nature. What do people do when I go back to my old neighborhoods? And I've lived a couple of places in Central Florida in the 23 years I've been here. I see something major going on. I get on my phone. I get on my computer. Some point. Look, what, I wonder what's happened by my neighborhood. And look. Did and that even and spark your attention? I was. There's, I a was digi- there's a digital footprint of of what where I went. On my phone, this right here phone. They can tell me I looked. I looked at these maps on my phone because it's on there. Right. The, the memory's there. You can't delete it. You can't. You came back to the neighborhood. You saw some things that are really out of the ordinary. Right. And I don't believe for a second that you thought that I'm not going to look. What's going on? What happened in my neighborhood? I I I mean I didn't search it up on anything on any of the devices that I have. Did you search it somewhere else? At, uh, Reme- rem- remember, like I said, I know things that you don't know, and honesty will get you all the the things I can do for you. Beyond, I can't deal with a, someone who lies to me, right. but I'll deal with someone and help them till the end, no matter what. Believe it or not, that's just me, and she'll tell you. Mm-hmm. I'm very. It's is what it is. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say if I can do something that can help you, I'm going to help you because every one of us make mistakes and do things we shouldn't have done in the heat of the moment to protect ourselves or to protect somebody else. It happens. I know you've searched for something. I know something. I can't tell you exactly, but you said, you won't you tell me, and I'll tell you if you're being true, what'd you search? On, uh, when I had gone to the Panera, I searched for, like, top stories, Oviedo or Chuliota or something like that. I found what? And then I saw that there was, uh, it was like just the initial, like it had like a video, but I didn't, I didn't listen to the video, but it had just an initial thing of that there was shootings in Salt and Circle, but it didn't say like the address or who was involved. It was just like the, this is the preliminary. Was that was on one of the news stations? Um, what, what was, what was, the, what was the site you searched? I can't. I honestly can't remember. And you, and I think you, it was one of the Weshes. But and you saw the story because we've seen the same stories. You've seen the story because there's a thing that will tell me how long of the of the time you spent on that. Right. You saw what happened. Yeah, I was on there for like 20 seconds. Well, well, what was your thoughts when you reviewed that story? I was freaking out, and I like I didn't. I was just like blank. I didn't know what to do. Now's the time. Now, now is the time. So what do you think happened? To be I think that there was something that obviously happened at the house. Tell me what happened. I don't know what happened. 
I know better. Listen to me. I know better. I can help you, Grant, with honesty. I can help you with honesty. We think something else happened before you left the home that you're either afraid of or embarrassed to talk about. But we need to know exactly what happened because, like Danny said, we can place you there at certain times. And so we need to know what happened before you left that house because you didn't leave with everything being okay. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't have anything else that I can really say. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do you even know why law enforcement got involved? Like, what, what brought us to that home? No, I... You just said it. You know something bad happened there. Out of your voice, not mine. I, didn't t I have not told you anything what's happened there. Something bad happened. You're here with us for a couple hours. You, you admit that you've looked at, at a site and seen something bad happen. Because the video is not of just a general area. It's of a specific location, correct? Yeah, I saw I saw like a a driveway or something. Like Whose driveway did you say? I don't know. I saw like like there was like a gate. There was a gate, and then I saw like that there was like two cars. But then I didn't see anything past that. Okay. Well, is that driveway and gate your home? I I honestly did not fixate on it for like a long period of time. I saw like the one with an actual like gate. You've been here with us. You think something bad has happened at your house. And to date, so long, you haven't even asked us about anybody. Well, that's because for the, like, the last time that I was arrested, I mean, like, nobody would tell me anything. I'm, once you start telling me something that's truthful that I know, then we're going to have a conversation of exactly what happened. I mean, you're a smart guy. You know something's happened at your home. You have law enforcement here. You haven't heard or gotten any well, emails. Well, I mean, I, I'm just scared as to what the answer is. Well, I you need to help yourself by filling in the blanks of what happened that night so we can give you the answer. Did anything more happen with you and your father besides him grabbing you up from the couch and yelling at you and kicking you out? Anything that at all? Did he... Did he harm you, hit you, no. draw any weapons on you? No, he didn't do anything like that. I mean, he was just yelling. This, this is the time to come to Jesus, to be honest. Because you know more. I'm looking in your eyes. Your eyes tell me exactly that you, you are hurting inside. I get it. Brother, I get it. You're hurting. And this is the You're only scared. time we can help you. Because once we get to a certain point, there's nothing I can do. It's it's in the hands of who has it. Nothing I can do. Honesty is always the best policy. You get you ca get caught stealing a car. You admit to it. I did it. How can I get help? What can be done to help me? And let me tell you the rest of my story. You're holding back. And if back. something happened that you were defending yourself, then we need to know that. If you were protecting yourself because you were in fear, then that makes sense. But we need to know exactly what happened for you to protect yourself. You can't minimize this. Once a, a wise man told me one time, once a, a, a bomb goes off, you can't defuse it. You can't. That's already out there. Now is the point to say, how do I put band-aids on myself to minimize the, the, the injuries I have? And we're giving you that opportunity. I want to give you the opportunity. I don't think you're a bad guy at all. I really don't. I think you're going through a very stressful and emotional time right now with being out of work and just dealing with all the problems with, with the arrest. You're probably not used to depending on somebody to pay all your bills. So now you have to do mom and dad or have to, have to give you money. Cody's having to give you money. And there's a significant debt to people. $200,000, I don't know what I'd do. I mean, mortgage, yeah, I get it, or something like that, or, or a medical bill for my child, yeah, I get it. But talking to some girl, you know, in Bulgaria, you know, you said you you hit it right on the head. You were embarrassed about it, and you have nothing to be embarrassed about. about and that. you said you had a connection with her. Sure. Mm -hmm. And here here he is, man. I want to help you. She want to help you. You gotta you gotta you gotta come to me with the truth now, because I I already know the truth. I do. Here's here's the, here's the chance. You can you can shake your head no and say I don't know. You do know, and I know you know. She knows she knows you know. 
There's a we, reason you didn't go back to the house. There's a reason why you haven't tried to reach out. I mean, it's I odd you haven't heard from anybody. Yeah, I mean, I must. I just, I don't. I, it's like it's words that like I can't think of to even say. But I'm assuming that you know when you see that there is a shooting somewhere that, and it's around, and it's that it's it has to do with my family. Your family has no known enemies. Nobody has a problem with them. Nobody. Right. Continue what you were saying. You said when you But I mean it's like I'm a s I just I don't I don't like I, I just I don't know how to even say the words. Well what would you Give me a roundabout what you're thinking. That somebody in my family's dead. And how does that make you feel if you think if you're thinking that? I have absolutely no ability to to comprehend the words because, like I said, I've been there for my whole entire life, and even though there has been struggles and everything like that. There has never been any issues. There's never been the struggles or the issues like happened Thursday. Never for you. I, I believe you 100%. I believe it's never been like that. But something happened Thursday unlike anything you've ever experienced in 29 years of your life. Never. And maybe you felt that was rock bottom for you. You were getting kicked out of the house. Your father gave you an ultimatum. I mean, that's, you know, you're already dealing with the, the debt and you know now you have to stop talking to this girl and now you're being kicked out of the home I mean that's I I can understand how you would feel I mean that you'd want to lash out or you know if something happened you'd want to defend yourself sure. absolutely but we need to know what happened I mean I know I can tell that you guys are like leading me into a certain way of what the only thing we're leading you to is wanting to get the truth from you. Not trying to make you say something that's not true, that's not accurate. The truth. The end. That's it. That's all we want is the absolute truth. Because it's got to come from you. It can't come from us. It can't come from us. Do we know what happened? Yeah, we, we, we already know what happened. But it has to still come from you, the truth. Because the parties involved... That's in, in all cases, you want the truth from them. I don't want somebody to say something that's not true. Absolutely not. I want them to say, this is what happened, and here's why it happened. Because some, sometimes there are things that are justifiable. I'm dealing with a case right now where some people were, were jumped in a house, there was a shooting, and the people involved in the shooting are not going to be charged because they have the right to defend themselves. Nothing in the, in, in, in the state or federal law says you have to be seriously physically harmed or, 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 or killed. Nothing does. You have a right to defend yourself. Absolutely you have you're a right to defend yourself. You're in fear of your... Sure. You being hard or your life. But, Grant, I just need you to come... It's, it's there. It's there. I can see it. It's on the tip of your tongue. You want to say, let me tell you what, what happened. I'm being honest. I think you're being honest about 95% of the story. I truly do believe you're being honest about that. I think it's that 5% as most people because they're afraid to actually talk to us and tell us their story. And sometimes we can help justify their story once they tell us the truth. It just, it, it's, it's a fact. It happens. That people are afraid to tell things. They're afraid, oh, I'm going I'm to get, you know, you're not going to believe me, you're not going to like me, you're going to think bad of me. It's not the case at all. I have no opinion one way or the other. I don't know you. I don't think bad of you. I don't think you guys don't know you. If you're a friend, I, I would think different of you. Or, or somebody I know was with something else I've ever had previous dealings. Yeah, I may have an opinion, but I don't have an opinion of you. I just don't, because don't, we don't know each other. We've never contacted each other, have we? No. So there's no reason for me. But I've been honest with you the entire time, and I will continue to be honest with you till the remainder of my career at Simmel County Sheriff's Office. I'll always be honest with you. Call me and say, hey, this is. I'm going to tell you. Again, you may not like, but I'm going to tell you. This is me. And pe some people don't do that, and some people will tell you things that are misleading. I'm not going to tell you anything that's misleading, because that's, that's my word. That's my integrity. That's my character. Um, now's the time, my friend. I want to help you. She wants to help you. And I'm telling you, I'm going to help you. Anything I can do 
within my power to, 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 to be honest with you. I'm going to. That's it. But i got to have the truth from you. I can't get it from somebody else. I can't get it from 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 her. I can't get it from other people I work with. It's got to come from you. I already, I already know. I already, I'm telling you, I already know. I got a couple more years. I'll retire. I'm going to take my career with me and be happy with what I've done because I've been honest with everybody. I, I'm asking you to be honest with me too. I want to help you. I mean, apart from the times maybe being wrong, I don't. I genuinely don't have anything else that I can say about what transpired the, uh, during the nighttime. So when you left your house, everybody was fine. Yeah. And when you left Cody, everything was fine. Well, we got called to the house because Cody didn't show up to work. So law enforcement goes over there and can you tell us what we found? What do you think we found when law enforcement arrived at your home? Uh, I mean, you guys are talking about guns and you're talking about other things that Uh, and then the uh, the website and everything that something happened to him. Who's him? Cody. Did you do anything to Cody? No. Did you do anything to your mother? No. Did you do anything to your father? No. You have any reason to believe that anybody else would harm them? No, the only thing that I was told was that Cody would take care of it for me. And that's all that I know. But you didn't tell Cody what your father said to you, correct? Correct. So when Cody made those comments to you, what do you believe he meant by that? Have you guys ever talked about? That he was going to... I thought he was just going to do what he always did does, which is where he just talks about it and he figures out whatever strategy he needs to. So if anything happened in the home to bring law enforcement there, what would you think happened? That there was a shooting. Between whom? I don't know. Between Cody and, and my dad. And why would you think that? To protect me, or to help me, or to do something with me. So you're telling me you did not shoot Cody, no. your father, or your mother? No. I mean, I don't know like what more I can say. Well, when law enforcement arrived, that's what they found. So you're the only outstanding child. You're the one that's been having problems with your dad. You're the one that we haven't been able to find for two days. Do you understand now why would we would be questioning you about this? Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't, like, I mean, I wouldn't be saying, like, all, like, you, I don't know the, the way to say, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, like, what to even say. We're trying to see if there's anything else that you've left out during the night from when you first came home and confronted your father or when he confronted you until the time you left that you've not told us. There's no, there, there was nothing... Uh, there was nothing to that level of confrontation between him and I. So if anything happened in the home, you believe it would be Cody and him? Yes. Because I was, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't have, you know, access to anything. Well, I can tell you from what we were right now, because you, you know what the news has said, correct? You know what the news has said. I, I only know that first story that I saw, and then I didn't look again. And what what did the first story say? 
that there was a shooting in the Salton Circle area, and the investigation is ongoing. Okay, so, and what did they say? They say the status of the people in, inside the house? What no. did they say? Because all the news have reported the same thing. Every one of them. The sheriff has, has held a press conference. The sheriff has provided information to the media. And it's all it's known. Uh, all that what has happened in the home. All that I had, all that I saw was literally like the paragraph, and then the last sentence was, "There's an investigation ongoing." And, and then I you, didn't. you saw more because the, at, at Panera, when you said you pulled it up, they they um, they um, had more information then. They had more information than just there's been a shooting. There's a lot more information was given. It was all over the news by by that time. The, the new news reported exactly what had happened. We know that Cody didn't shoot your dad. We know Cody didn't shoot your mom. We know Cody didn't shoot himself. There's something. And you still haven't asked us the that, condition of them or anything. That's because I'm. I'm. I mean, I don't know what the normal proceedings are, but I don't. I mean, I. The normal proceedings are for you to be honest. About we, what happened, and then we help you understand everything that's going that's going to go on from here on, on out of what our responsibilities are. And we don't believe you're being honest. We feel that you are leaving something out about what happened in that home. And the evidence tells us what happened in the home, but you need to fill in the blanks. Here, here's 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 my hand for honesty. Here it is. We're here to help you do this, and you're not going to like something here in just a minute, and I know it's going to hurt you, but you're leaving things out. You've got to you've got to take that step and cross over and say, okay, I have to tell you. You pro you'd probably rather tell us what happened before Eva opens that up. You probably want to tell us and save yourself some grief by saying, here, let me tell you. Here's what happened that night that I wasn't completely honest about it. Honestly, honestly great. I believe you've been honest about a, a very lot of things. I really do. Because I can I can account for your day. I can account for your night. For just we have a couple very small polls. Ninety five percent of the story I already know. That's why you're you're here with us. And again, your cell phone's gonna put you in the areas you know, we're gonna check exactly where you were throughout the entire time you started this conversation. No. So if you went back to the house and did something, or how long you were there, we're going to know. No, I mean, I never did anything like that. Just things like, look, remember I saw the like digital footprint? Yeah. E-Pass tells me where you went. We have a thing called, they're called LPRs, license plate readers, in different places all over everywhere. And every time your car passes, or any car, I look at, I have somebody, one of our Intel girls, put in, or guys put in the thing, hey, has this tag went by there? Yep. Has it been in a certain place? Yep. It tells me exactly where you went. Man, I'm telling you. I know it's hard to trust the police. I know people don't don't trust me. Don't trust police. You gotta give us. You gotta give me the chance to, to to trust me. You have to. I already know. I know what happened. I know. Ninety five percent of the story. I, I know what happened. And and so do you. And it's in your face. It's in your emotions. It's in your body language that something is severely from from the minute I met you in the hotel, severely bothering you. And you knew why we were there the minute we came to see you. You knew why we were there. You knew it, and you knew what I was going to tell you at some point during the course of the day, what was going to happen, you already know, because you've checked on it. I know you've checked on it. There, there's a way to tell. I said that the best thing about the Internet and electronics, they tell a story. And they tell how many times things have been looked at, what's been looked at, and how long you spent there. Sheriff can tell me every website I've ever been on this iPhone, every one, and how long I was there for. Every meme I made up for to send to somebody something funny as a joke, they can see it. I'm here to help you, man. I'm here to help you get through all this. I'm an, I am an—I am an honest guy. I'm going to be honest. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to be honest to the very last day that I, I deal with you. And then when this, um, when this investigation continues, I'll go on to the next person and be honest with them. But I've got to have you step over that little bit of line. We're basically, we got a line here. And you know, you're, you're, you're so close to wanting to step over that line. You have come all the way from the back side of that table over to here. And now you're right about right here that you want to do it, but you're scared. I get that, my man. I get you're scared. But something happened there that kicked us off, unlike anything that ever happened in your life, to get to where we are today.
And I just need you to tell me exactly what happened. Here's your brother, the guy who's always looked out for you, correct? Paid for your trip to China or Japan, I'm sorry. Paid bills. Your dad and your brother have paid two hundred thousand dollars of this video chat, whatever, with the virtual not the virtual but the grown book area. Dad's pissed about the cost, I'm sure. I'd, I'd be upset, too, $200,000. of think, think of the car you could have for $200,000 or paid off college debt or whatever. Some girl in Bulgaria got basically your college debt. Now, I, I'm sure your brother and dad may have been as happy if you take the hundred grand and paid off that, that, that program. But there's a lot of pressure on you. I get it. I need you to step over, man. You're right there. You're right there at the end, ready to go. We're ready to, 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 to take the information from you and, and move forward. We're there. I just need you. I just need you to take that last step over and say, "All right, let me tell you what else." I've been honest about the vast majority, but let me tell you what actually happened that night. It's there. When you're talking about the phones, because I'm I'm illiterate when it comes to phones and Wi-Fi and all that. So you said when your dad cut off your phone a few days ago, um, you had no phone number, like no way to call, just pick up the phone and call someone, correct? Right. So when you would communicate on Twitter, like you said either on your cell phone or your Surface, you would have to be connected to Wi-Fi, is that correct? Right. Um, when you were in your home, were you connected to Wi-Fi? Um, no. Talking to these, you know, when you did the Twitter and so on and so forth, were you connected to the yeah. Wi-Fi at your home? Yes. Both no, 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 wait. No, no, I wasn't. I was on... Um, I was on the LT. I was on LTE. I was just on the cell service. And you can still talk, do the Twitter thing on cell service on right. the LTE at home. Right. Okay. And then when you are at the Publix, right. You're on what? That's on Wi-Fi. Publix is Wi-Fi. Right. Okay. And then you said the next time was at Panera. Yes. Was on the Wi-Fi. Both your cell phone and the Surface. Just the Surface. I had, I hadn't. I the Panera was just on the Surface. Okay. All right, so again, with the whole digital footprint like Danny's talking about, you know that we will know exactly where you were at every time that you connected to Wi-Fi and how long you were connected to the Wi-Fi. You understand that? Yes. Okay. So when you drive away from the Publix or you're driving away from Panera, we will know all of that. And every hot spot you hit along the way, it's going to think, it's going to make that connection, even just for a brief second. And I'm very familiar with that area out there. I used to live out of 419 and 50, and I know just about where every hot spot is um, along the way. So it's going to say, it's going to be boom, 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 boom. I want to help you, man. I really do. But I got you've got to take that, that little step and, and, and trust that we are going to do everything that, that we can do and be honest with you. We're going to do it. But I need, you to, I need you to step over. You have to. Because what happens if you don't, you know, it's going to be something that we just can't do anything to 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 deal with. We can't. Honestly, I, I, I've, I've talked to people. I talked to a guy that was responsible for a lot of bad stuff in, in South America, and we sat down over the course of a month, and he finally admitted to some horrific, horrific things. And felt a lot because better about it, right? Because he trusted us. Because he trusted us. Because he realized, you know, you know, the typical thing, you know, the police, you know, they only do is lie to you, lie to you, lie to you, or whatever. No, I'm not. I'm like that. I'm not. I'm not I know she ain't either. I just want the truth. I want the truth to be told, no matter which way it is. And you will feel so much better. We're talking about your family here. Are sure. you telling us anything that we're missing? You're going to feel a lot better by telling us the truth. Guaranteed. It's hard. It's hard to take that that leap of faith. It is. It's like jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. Yeah, you know if the parachute works the way it's supposed to. It's going to be okay, but do I? The first time I take it, I just got to take it. You got to take that. You got to take that leap of faith with us. I can only do so much with honesty. Honesty, honesty, honesty. So, what are you not telling us? Um, what happened at that home that you know? Grant, I know I you mean, want to I, tell it's, on, it's on the tip of your tongue. I know you. Want, it's, it's right there. It's, it's that bad taste you want to get out to get it off off your chest and uh, out of your head. But you got to do it. I can't make you say it. I need you to say it so then we can move forward with the truth. 
Like I said, we're, we're at 95, probably really we're probably supposed to get 97, 98% sure, but that last step you got to test it yourself. Because if, if when you say something, you get locked into a story, and it's proven to be false, then you got problems. Because what what do people look at during the course of during the course of an investigation? Did everybody who was honest and who who was dishonest? So there's an explanation to things. You have to explain them, and you're missing that two, three, four, five percent of the truth that you're holding back. And that's the most crucial for you right now is the truth. Sounds crazy, but that's a fact. The truth shall set you free emotionally. You're, you're probably going to break down because you've got this all pent up inside you that you want to say it, but you're afraid to say it. I get it. I get it. I've talked to people that make that, that makes it, that all this look like nothing, this whole investigation like nothing. They're just bad. Then once they get this off their chest, they say, you know, I didn't think I would, but I feel better. I know it's tough, but I feel better. Because now I've, I've told the rest of my story. You can't, you know, it's like reading a book and getting almost to the end, the conclusion, and you just shut it. you got to open up. you got to open up to me, man. I'm here. I'm here to take that information from you. To get you over this hump to, to a little peace in your mind. You'll never have peace without... Saying here, let this me is exactly you. what happened. And, and I already, I already know. I'll, I'll be honest, we already know. This isn't my first rodeo. She's been doing. We've been doing what? Between the two of us, fifty years. Over fifty years. Married. Over fifty years. I've seen. So what is it you need over. to tell us that we're missing? Step over. I mean, the only thing that I know is just that. I mean, I I uh, left the house later than what I had said. Um, Did you leave the house with your brother Cody looking like that? Or did you leave the house with your father looking like that? Or your mother? Is that how you left your family? No. Nobody, nobody else went into that house. Who left your family like this? If you were the one that's been depressed, you were the one that owes money, you were the one that got into a confrontation with your father, who did this to your family? If you were trying to defend yourself or something else happened, we need to know now to help you. So tell us what happened, Grant. We're here to listen to you. Grant, need the truth. We're, we're here to make this right. You've got to tell the truth. It's on the tip of your tongue, my man. I get that. It's Did your tough. father go after you and you try to protect yourself? No, I didn't do any of this. There, there's something that's going to come up that that is going to make this all come real. I'd rather it come from you than have to do it that way. The evidence been, tells us what happened. You have to fill in the blanks. They can't tell me what happened. Fact, fact I know. She, she, never, she never held a gun. She didn't have a gun that night. Fact. He never fired a gun. Fact. He never fired a gun. Never did. This is the person right here, Mom, who always stuck up for you. Something happened so bad that caused her death, your dad's death, and Cody, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you just about how it happened. One, two, three, based on evidence. Based on evidence. I know he did not shoot your mom. I know he didn't shoot your dad. I know he didn't shoot himself. And I know from, from video surveillance camera in the neighborhood, nobody else came to that house. I know. I know I can account for everybody that went to the house. I know. So tell us what happened. I know it. Listen to me. Hey, I know. Video surveillance tells me everything that happened this night. I'm telling you. Of people that, that you'd be surprised who in your neighborhood has video. And I know that no, but there's only four people was at this house during this time. One, two, three, four. Tell me. You got to tell me, man. You got to tell me. Get over that over that hoop. The video is the video. If you're sitting there saying no, 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 and video shows something else. Guess what? Big problem. 
because it will wind up later on that that you can't get any help from anybody. A lot of this, what people make decisions on is honesty. With somebody honest. Of course, of course you're going to be somewhat dishonest at some point. We get that. We understand that. But at some point when you have that come to Jesus time that now I need to, now I need to, to really, i got to tell you what happened. This is it. This is it. Video tells me everything I need to know about this from the neighborhood. And you're the only one left to tell us. I know it's hard to... St look at me, Grant. Look at me. Look at my eyes. I know it's tough, man. I do. It's a tough thing to say, but we need to know what caused things at your house that night to come become so bad that we're this. He's violent. We know that. He's got a gun on. We get it. Cody just probably ran around, or went around with a gun because he normally did. He, wa he walked in the house and was shot the minute he walked in the house. The minute he walked in. We see trajectory. We find the projectile. We've got everything on that. He shot over here and is brought over here. See it over there. Find the we found the bullets in, 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 the, uh, in the house. Mom's sitting her thing with a glass of wine doing her thing and she's shot. You just got to step over and tell me, man. I want to help you. I do. The evidence is going to be there. Most people, we I would not. We have cartridge cases. We have projectiles. And fingerprints. So you just need to tell us what led up to this. You've been arrested, correct? Yeah. So we have your fingerprints, correct? You understand that? Physical evidence is something I can't manipulate. It's either there or it's not there. Didn't fire a gun. Didn't fire a gun. Didn't fire a gun. None of them did. None of them did. Cody did not go or home. Or did your father gun. point a gun at you? No, there's there's nothing else that I can say. Then you're. This is not going to end up the way you want to the, with what you're telling me right now. Factual items do not support what you're saying. Nothing that we can make up or I think or she thinks or over thinks. You got to be honest. That and the, the minute you start being completely honest, and you're pretty honest. I'm not going to say you're not. The minute you tell us what happened to get this to here is the second that we start moving forward with healing. You say you can't something? Yes, you can. There's something that you, you have done that proves different. I'm telling you. I, I, I don't know how else to, I can't make it any clearer. There's something there. Just tell me. Tell me. Your emotions, your demeanor, your body language, your eyes tell me everything I need to see about you. You want to tell me in the worst way. You want to get this, this pain off your chest. Do it. Come forward. T tell the truth. So I go to church and, and doing your confessional. When I go to church, a few times I go a year and I get up there and, and ask for forgiveness, I feel 100% better for all the crappy things I've done and didn't, didn't do what I should have done throughout the course of the year. Short with my coworkers. Short with my kids. Not, not living the way I should live. Gets me too. And when I go up there and make my confession... To, to, to the pastor, it makes me feel better. I mean, there's just, there's just nothing else that I can say. There's nothing else that happened in that home while you were there that would lead up to this? No. Your father didn't point a gun at you? There was nothing else more than what I had said. Then who do you think did this? I don't know. I don't, I don't have the answer. I'll give you a few minutes to think about this. And think about life decisions and where do we go from here. So a few minutes to get plenty of thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Give me Do you need a drink or anything, Grant? No.
only thing that I have is just the the times in which uh, I left the house. You know, there was still an ar there was an argument when Cody had gotten home, and then there was nothing that that he could do to help me. So I don't remember the exact time when I actually left, but I had left later than what I had said. So you were home when Cody got home? Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, what time did he get home, and why did he come home? I mean, he got home at, I think, like, 10.30. I still think that's when he got home. It was like at around 10.30. I don't know why he was able to leave early. And what was going on at the house when he arrived? My uh, dad and my mom were arguing and then I was still just packing up all my stuff or gathering the things that I could gather. Um, and then when Cody got home, he started to transgress with my dad, and I was still kind of just staying out of it and doing my own thing. And then the end result was still the end result, and then I had to still leave. And then, so is it true that you still met Cody up the block, or was that... No, no. So you didn't meet him up the no. block. So why did you tell us that? I don't know. All right, so then now let's start from the time you and your father started have the, having the argument. About 6, 6.30, you said, when he got home? Yeah. Tell us exactly what happened from that time on. Even what was said. I mean, it was just a lot of yelling. I mean, it was... It was every, I mean, it was everything that he had been telling me for the past months and months and months about oh. just how I had ruined his retirement and how I had pushed him back and now, you know, he'd never be able to do the things that he wanted to do because I had saddled him with a lot more expenses and that I had told him that, you know, once I can get a job, then I have plans to make amends for the things that I had caused for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's he's yelling. Yeah. He's heated. Are you yelling back at him? No. I never yelled at my dad. And are you sitting on the couch downstairs, like you said? I was in the living room, yeah. And at what point does he put his hands on you? It's just that, I mean, it's like maybe five minutes into the conversation. So, I mean, there's not, there wasn't really anything that was a trigger that I can think of. What was your reaction when he grabbed your shirt and pulled you up? I mean, her, uh, I mean, I had uh, always been passive, so I mean, I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't fight back or anything like that. I just tried to get my my grounding, and then, you know, and then we were just standing, and you know, it just continued on. And then what? And then after that, uh, I started the whole process of gathering everything. And where's your mom at this point? She was still in her office. Did she intervene at all? She had gotten up to say that, you know, like you need, like you need to settle down, or you, you know, some some sort of diffusing statement that she always used to make. And then my dad yelled at her to stay out of this, and then she just went back into there. Okay, and then what? What happened next? Um, I mean, then it was just, like, uh, it was just a lot of, like, just it was just a lot of yelling and confrontation between me and Dad, but there wasn't anything more physical about it. And like I said, I was just going up and about, 
you know, getting my stuff and taking it out to my car and getting back whatever I could, whatever I could gather. And what did your dad do while you were doing that? He was just following me around. Just making sure you were gathering your stuff to get out? My, my possessions and not taking anything of his. And how long did that go on before Cody shows up? I mean, that was like for three, three, four hours or something like that. So you did that for three hours, yeah. gathering your stuff. And dealing with Dad, and because it wasn't just like he so just he pack up those two little bags you brought. It was three hours. Yeah, he wouldn't just. I mean, I went onto my computer to to back up some stuff onto like some flash drives, and I mean all that other stuff. But it wasn't just like with him where I could just go and do my thing. You know, I mean he would stop me, and then we would. It talk for like an extended period of time and then I would start to do my thing again and then it would stop again and I mean that's all that was. Was your father wearing this? Yeah. And what about that gun on his waist? No. He didn't have that on? No. Is this normal? No. I mean I, had, I hadn't seen him have his gun since since like high school. So he doesn't walk around like this normally. No. Why do you think he would be like this? I don't know if it's because of what he had told me that if I came back that he would kill me. And like you said, you're afraid of him. Yeah. But we're here. We're here to this, this, this. This is the person that is coming to to solve the problems for you or came home to solve the problems. There's the one who always sticks up for you, including talking to the girl. She talked to the girl in Bulgaria, didn't she? Yeah. She had conversations and said that you know, you're not a bad guy and uh, how this breakup basically is affected you, had, didn't she? Told him it was bad. Here's the problem. Is that. This one's behind you, supports you. That one's behind you, supports you. This one, I'm sure, cares about you, but is upset. Because, like you said, you have ruined his plans for retirement so he can't retire because of the financial loss. How much money did Cody give you? Uh, Sixty thousand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dad gave you how much? Like a hundred thousand. Mom gave you how much? It's like thirty thousand or something. So like around two hundred thousand. And the vast majority of this money went to some girl on the on the internet. So they're upset. I get that. But we know he didn't fire a gun. We know she didn't fire a gun. We know he didn't fire a gun. He shot the second he walks in the house. At what point does he come into the house? It's like like 10.30. And where does he enter? Through the garage. Where does he park his car? Under the the awning thing. Outside, not in the garage? Right. So do you see him walk in? Or hear him come in? No. So you're upstairs maybe, or where are you when he comes home? When I, when he came home, I was doing, I was uh, gathering the, some of the, like, power bars into my little so shoulder satchel thing. And where are the power bars? In the kitchen? or In the kitchen. So you see him come in? I, I hear the door, but then okay. that's it. And then when do you see him? I, I see him when he walks into the kitchen. And what do you guys, what what is said? I bet he asks me what I'm doing, and I basically tell him the quick, short story, because at the time my dad and my mom were talking. Where were they? They were in her office. Okay, and what is the short story you tell that Cody? Co that Dad caught me still talking to the girl that had caused all the problems and that uh, he was kicking me out of the house because I had broken his rule. Did you tell Cody that he threatened to kill you if you came back home? No, I still didn't tell Cody about that. I just, I had told Cody previously when I went to Cornerstone that that's what uh, dad was going to do if I had made any more mistakes, not the specific one that I had caused, but if I had made any more mistakes. And then Cody told me that, he
he was going to do that when I went into one of the side offices with him before they officially dropped me off. When you went to Cornerstone? Right. So your dad had told you in the past before that he would kill you? Right. For what reason? For, if I basically did anything related to this, again, causing, costing him a lot of money. And Cody knew about that? Right. He didn't, he just didn't know about um, the one that was just said. Whether or not he knew from, like, the paper that my dad had written out of all the consequences and everything like that. When did your dad write this paper? Before they uh, came to get me on the 4th. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the exact time. Do you I, know where the paper is or what it's written on? Uh, it's written on, like, a uh, green, like a greenish yellow college rule, just piece of paper and pen. In the office or bedroom? Or I don't, I don't know where he keeps all of his stuff. All right. So, what else do you and Cody talk about? So then, after talking about that, he says that he'll take care of it, and then him and my dad, they're the ones that always yell and raise their voices and everything like that. So Even did your dad eventually enter the kitchen? Or did Cody go to your dad in the office? No, my dad came in when he heard that me and Cody were talking. And what what was the conversation then? When they started to talk, I just left the room, and I just went back upstairs. So you didn't hear what they talked about? I mean, not in any... It was, it was more just that he was defending that it's just, you know, that I just did this, and that it's not like it's costing any money. Were they, were they yelling? Did they raise their voice? They, they were talking. They were. They were yelling. Did you hear any threats or? My dad had said that um, that he was that everybody had agreed that if I had done this, that I would have to go. That there wasn't any more wiggle room or second chances or anything like that. And then. Uh, you know, he came around to the base of the staircase, and then he told me that I need to go. Your father did? Yeah. And then I told him that I was just trying to pick up the last few things that I needed to. Uh, there was, like, a bag of my, like, a, a trash bag of, like, my clothes um, that I had still not unpacked from when I got back from Cornerstone that I just, you know, had to gather and put into my car, you know, all that, just random stuff. And then, um, I don't know what time I actually left, but I think it was closer to, like, midnight or something. And, and when then, you left, where was your mother? When I left, my mom was still just in her office. And where was your dad? Dad and Cody were just yelling inside the kitchen. So I guess when not, you left, not really, you heard them not, yelling? Not really yelling anymore, but they were... It was basically just the same exact conversation that had been going on where there was nothing left and then Dad looked through some of my things to make sure that I wasn't taking anything that wasn't mine. Uh, I think the only thing that he had a problem with was that uh, I had taken, like, um, like some of my, my paperwork bills from, like, the Chapman Law Group, but then since I wasn't the one paying for it, that they would need those, but then I still just ended up keeping it because I figured nothing else was going to, like, be covered for me or anything. So then after I left, I took that, the Fort Christmas Road, um, that connected up with 50, and then I was just at the Publix for the rest of the time. The same Publix we talked about earlier on 419. So from about midnight till 7 a.m., like you said, you were at Publix. Publix. And then is everything else the truth as far as the job interview the job and so on and so forth? All the rest of the times were accurate. And when I looked at the site, I, I did not, I, I only saw a small blurb. So when did you learn that your family was dead? I had been worried since last night when I was, uh, just in the hotel, but I knew when you guys 
told me. I mean, like I knew when you guys had told me. You already knew, though. But I had... You already said... You knew. At any point, did you feel like you needed to reach out to Cody and see if he was okay, or...? I just didn't want to call anywhere. I just didn't want to know. But you couldn't call. I, well, I mean, you had brought up the hotel, hotel room was there. Phone, but I just didn't, even, I didn't even think I was to use that. you got a medical background, correct? Yes. you ever been to an autopsy? No. Okay. An autopsy tells us a lot of things. Cause of death, a lot of times, how close somebody was to something. Again, remember what I told you earlier? She didn't fire a gun, he didn't fire a gun, he didn't fire a gun. So they didn't get into a shooting amongst themselves inside the house. Angles tell us a lot of things. Dad was over here when he got shot. The bullets in the cabinet and in the wall. We know that. We, that's one of those facts we just can't dispute. I see where shell casings are over here. I see where shell casings are in here. I see where shell casings are there. Cody was shot the minute he walked in the door when he first got home. Bullet went through him from his from his head to the back of his head hit the door frame and packed it into the wall. He never fired. He never fired. She never fired. And we know what time Cody left to work. I mean, from his boss, from his co-workers. And you got to remember, we've talked to everybody before we talked to you. So we know what time he left work. We know why he told his co-workers and his boss why he left work. And we know what time he got home. And we have text messages that he has sent people afterwards. So based on what you're telling us, that he comes home and has this confrontation, talks to you, talks to his dad, you leave about midnight, and he's still there talking to your dad in the kitchen, none of that adds up. Can approximate the time of death based on the body. Now is the time, Grant. Now is the time, buddy. I'm, I'm just so I believe I this, this, and this happened while you were still present in the house. And for whatever reason, you don't want to tell us. We understand your father was abusive, and we understand that he was the asshole. And if he threatened you, that he was going to kill you when you came back. You were probably in fear, were you not? So did your brother come home to try and defend you and then this gunfight happened and you got so scared that you left? No, I mean, I, I, I had left when I had said that I had left. Which time? Around the night or midnight? No, around the midnight time. Again, we know stuff from, from the medical examiner office of times. I said this a couple of times. He never fired a gun. He never fired a gun. She never fired a gun. Nobody did. Nobody in the house fired a gun. Fact. We know. I'm running at DNA off the guns that are on scene and the cartridge casings. And all Any that. Any reason to believe that your fingerprints or your DNA will be on any of those weapons or the cartridge cases that are on the scene? I mean, not that I can think of. I mean, I know that me and Cody had, you know, like, I mean, we had used each other's guns before in the past, like when we go to the range, but... But you what? said you had no access to these guns now. Right. I mean, but yeah, I mean, it was like a long, that was a long time ago. So, I don't know, there's... So the gun that's still on scene and the gun on your father's waistband, is your DNA or fingerprints going to be on it? Not that I can think of. Let me throw something at you. We pulled financial records from your dad, you, Cody, and your mom. Remember that payment you made? Which one? Which the payment on, on uh, that, that bill you had? The five ninety nine ninety nine. I saw that one. Well, guess what got paid right about the same time? What? $33,000 of debt was paid off of his credit card. 
same time, within a very short time of each other. Those things go together. Records. Records show what was happening. Wait, thirty what happened? Thirty three thousand dollars on I think your dad it was a USAA credit card. He had thirty three thousand dollars was paid to pay off that credit card. I, I just don't know where else to go to get you to, to, to come around because it does not make any logistical sense of what you're telling us. It doesn't. If these two got in a shooting, we would know. We would know they shot each other. We'd know that. But why mom? Things just got so bad and out of hand like never it's been before in your life. Never been here before in your life or in your family's life. He's pissed. His future, his retirement, his plans are being upset by you because of the financial cost. I would almost bet this is just a horrible, bad incident that on any other day wouldn't happen. But you and me both know, as does she, what happened that night. You're coming around and I really appreciate it, Grant. I do appreciate it. Now you're starting to tell more of the truth. Everybody minimizes when they're in a stressful situation. They do. My boss is going to start yelling at me and try to minimize the effect of thinking about what am I going to do? How do I explain to him what happened legitimately? Not that I'm, I want to be a liar, but let me explain to him how legitimately something happened. Where how I bumped my defender on my car, got a ding in it. Try to think, well, let me, how am I going to explain this? And you've already told us a lie. This whole map thing is bullshit. So when people start telling little fibs, they add up the big ones. And I told you. Just tell the truth. I already know the truth. I know the truth. You can't convince somebody of something they already know the facts of. Walk outside today, you try to tell me it's night, and I know it's, it's, it's noon. I know it's daytime, right? We both agree? Here's the time. Tell me what happened. Tell me what really happened in this very short time to get to where we are right here. Tell me a hundred times. None of them fired a gun. None of them. What they call gunshot residue. There's no gunshot ready to go on anybody's hands. Nobody fired a gun. He didn't shoot him. He didn't shoot him. Neither one shot them. Tell you. Look at everything. He walked in the door, shot them, and he walked in the door. Because right down here is a bag he carries in. Dropped right there where he opened the door, walked in, and gets shot. There's Dad's lunchbox right there. Dad came home, was probably messing with it right around here arguments, whatever's going on, but there was even an argument. Dad gets shot and he drops right here. And most likely either got pulled or crawled over here. Over here. I wonder what DNA is going to be in that blood right there. What's going to be on your dad's pants? We got his pants. We take we take all the clothes, all everything, everything that we take. Your DNA going to be found on his pants? No. You sure? It may be something a question I'm asking I already know the answer to. I know, but uh, my DNA wouldn't, shouldn't be on its hand. Shouldn't? Okay. Explain to me, I just need you to tell me, why the minute he walks in, he gets shot. He shot, it's right there, just above there is, is, is what it is. We got an investigator of the autopsy right now, and a doctor saying, here's what happened here where he shot. Cody shot right below the eye, it comes out the back of his neck, and into the wall. Dad shot twice. And the doctor basically said he could have crawled from here to here because of the injury. And we're going to look at their clothing, your clothing, for DNA, gunpowder, blood spatter, all of that. Inside of your car, all the stuff that's in your room. All your electronic footprint, we're going to look at. We will look at it. We will see it. It's, it's a whole lot easier for you just to say what happened than to have to come up here and say, here, boom, 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 because that, that may, may change the direction of this case severely. Of whether somebody says, here, let me tell you what happened. It got, got me here. This blew up. He's been threatening me. He's upset at me. I've ruined you know his financial 
success in his, his plans for retirement with the Cody house. Cody tried to get involved and he wanted to protect Cody. That makes sense. You and Cody are close. I just I, I don't I don't have the answer for anything else. Okay. This is this is the last time before I'm gonna walk out and then I'm done. And I'm done for good. When I'm done, I'm done done. They won't be, hey, can I come back and talk to you? The minute I walk out that door with your story is where you stay at. That's your that's your lot in life. I am more than willing to sit here all day and all night if you want to to talk to find the facts. But I can't. I told you from the beginning. I will not deal with somebody who's not being truthful with me. You're not being truthful. You are not telling me the truth. You've lied, and we've forgiven you over that. We've forgiven you over it. You can't lie about this, Grant. You can't. This is too important for your family of what has happened. There's not somebody. There's not somebody out running around the United States to kill them. There's not. There's no. There's nobody out there. Some hidden killer. There's not. You don't show the, the, the remorse that you should for someone who's, who's lost three family members. Body language, eyes, and demeanor. Here's the time, man. I know it's tough. Tell the truth. Because when I walk out, there is no there is no another day. And it's going to look worse for you when we prove it. By the DNA, the gunpowder, the blood spatter, fingerprints. Now is the time for you to be honest with us and is exactly what happened in that house before you left. We're, we'll be there for weeks gathering evidence. We are going to build the case because we're going to disprove the fact that nobody else came in this house. We already we already know that answer, but at some point we will build a case to the conclusion that nobody else will. Win. I mean, I just I don't have anything else that I can say. brother even said the same thing of like when all this financial stuff was happening like why I couldn't show like a like sadness towards it and uh, I just don't know I mean I don't I just don't know what else to say do you not feel bad for doing this to your family You don't know what? You don't know if you feel bad for doing this to your family? I mean, I've been getting blamed for the last half a year for everything, and I've been trying to move forward into a positive direction. And then every day I'm reminded of all the trouble that I had caused. And then I keep being told the same thing over and over again, but there's nothing that I can do to change it. Do you regret doing this to each one of your family members? I didn't do that to each one of them. Who did? I don't Who has such an axe to grind with your family that they shot him twice in the head, him in the head, and her? Who has it? Who, here, you, you sit in my seat for a minute. Sit in my seat. Get out of it here. Sit right here. Come here. Sit right here. Get out of that seat. Sit right there for me. Sit on it, look at it, look at it from, from, from our side. Look at it from our side. Think of it from what, the way we look at it. Independent. What are we here for? One thing. The blindfolded ladies with justice. Justice is all we're here for. Justice. Look at it. Who has a motive? Who has a motive to hurt your family? You could say Jason, but we already know where Jason was. I can account for every bit of, of Jason's activity. Every bit of it. Jason gave a statement. He was, what's the first thing we looked at? Is Jason telling the truth? Can we verify what he told us? And in, in quick succession, we did. He said, I was X, 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 X. And he went, yep, he sure was. And we know exactly when Cody left work. And know when Cody got home. And know when Cody stopped answering his phone. And know when bills were paid. And knows when vehicles left. And know 
when they when phones tagged hotspots. No at all. No every bit of it. Now it's time for you to admit to what you know. Because you're saying I didn't do something, I don't know something. It's an easy easy thing to say to yourself, but you can't say it to us. Because facts and evidence don't lie. I've done everything I can do to get to the bottom and the truth. And we're not getting there. But I promise you down the down at some point the facts will get there. And then you're going to ask, hey, can I talk to you and tell you what happened? And the answer is no. After it's, after we walk out of the room, like I said, we're not, it's done. There is not a second chance. There's only one, there's one time to make a first impression. You heard that one before? This is it. I believe you're not a bad guy. I do. I believe you want to tell us what happened. And there's a reason this got so bad. There's a reason. accused you of you didn't do? The grand theft thing? Mm -hmm. Right. Two things that happened here today. Two things. You're a guy swimming out in the middle of the ocean and we're going to give you one of two things based on, based on you. You can have a life preserver Keep to keep from drowning, or you get the boat anchor. It's which one do you want? Because we will give you whichever one you ask for. The life preserver, the boat anchor. I want the life preserver, but I've said everything that I can. You, you want it, and I, I believe you do, but you have not said everything you, you can say. Be careful of locking yourself into something, because just like this, you've locked yourself into... I was down on Fort Christmas. That's where me and Cody met, which we've proven to be a lie. We are we already knew that. We already knew that wasn't true. But I'm gonna let you say it. I'm gonna let you say what you want to about being honest in here. And at some point we will pick that apart of why you're not honest and what physical evidence shows to be. What physical evidence shows to be. You want to be honest? This is it. this is the time right now to be honest. You say if I can say what you, you're saying what you want to say to me right now, just like you wanted me to believe that you were down on Fort Christmas down the road with, with Cody, that you wanted to. That's what you wanted me to believe. And there's a reason you were being deceptive to me because it doesn't matter where you met him and had this conversation. If you lie about something small, you lie about something big. You're being deceptive over something that doesn't matter if you met him down the road or not. There's no reason to lie about where you met him at. This is it. Your one chance in the rest of your life to be honest about this right here. You say, I've told you what I can tell you. You told me what you want me to know, just like you told me what you wanted me to know about that and for Eva to know what she wants to know about that. But it's not, it's not true. Just like you want to tell me what 
you want me to know about this. I get this. I get that. I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't get it. I don't. One, I get. I understand. She didn't bully you. She didn't belittle you. She didn't run you into the ground. Nor did he. I don't get it. But this is it. Because you're just about... I've kind of got a, a number in my mind that I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk out and we'll take our stuff and be on our way and you're going to go the, the way you go. But there will be a time where you ask for that life preserver. I can't give it to you. I can't. Once I cross... Once I cross a line, I gotta step over. Can't do it. Won't do it. Think, think, think about that. I want to talk to her for a minute. Think, think about the, 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 the last life preserver I can give you. Think about it. Take a few minutes just to, to reflect on it, and then we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes, and then we'll go from there. And what happens is what happens. Fair enough.
You right, Grant? Okay. Need some food, some water. Good. You good to stay for a while longer? You okay? I mean, I just I just don't have anything more that I can say. I don't okay. know what the next. I'm not keeping here. You, if you want to stay, well, I'll, I'll talk to you till whatever, till you're you're happy with with everything and you're okay. Um, you're not detained. You're not being kept here. You're here. You're here willingly. Remember we talked about that. You're still looking. You're still, you're still here voluntarily. I'm not. I'm not detaining you. I'm not keeping you. Like I said, if you want to walk out and take a break, catch your breath, get something to eat. If you want something to eat, we'll, I've been here for for a while. If you want something to eat, I'll be more than happy to get some food. Whatever you want, we'll send somebody to go get it, or whatever you want to do. It's it's totally up to you. Of of, like I said you're voluntarily here. I just I don't I don't know what the I will I will stay here and talk to you until you get everything off your chest as, as long as you want to but you're here on your own accord we we talked about that at the beginning remember you're here because you want to be here you don't you know you wanted to to, to come up here you had no problem coming you're here so you don't want to be here you don't have to be here and I don't want to be here anymore okay. Give me a minute, we'll be chatting. Somewhere you want to go? You too, we can put you up in a room for the night. I know things are tough for you. I was just going to go back to the hotel. I don't think you're going to be able to get back into that room. Oh. But if you want, we can put you up somewhere for the night. Yeah. Uh, you want to go? You got somewhere you want to go? A certain area you want to go to? A friend? So we don't mind putting you up in a hotel for the night. Mm -hmm. We got some hotels right here in Sanford. That'd be alright. Yeah. Good check. Okay. Fine. What I'll do is uh, we'll get you up somewhere. I'll give you my card, my phone number. If you want to talk to me, you're more than welcome to call me. And uh, we'll move forward from there. Fair enough. Any questions of me before I go, or before before we walk like, out? I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Like what am I uh, like allowed to do? Live your life. And what I mean, because it's like I have my uh, like my wallet and all that stuff. It's back at the hotel room. And when did your dad write this paper? Before they uh, came to get me on the fourth. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the exact time. Do you know where the paper is or what it's written on? 
Uh, it's written on like a uh, green, like a greenish yellow college rule, just piece of paper and pen. In the office or bedroom? Or I don't, I don't know where he keeps all of his stuff. All right. So what else do you and Cody talk about? So then after talking about that, he says that he'll take care of it, and then him and my dad, they're the ones that always yell and raise their voices and everything like that. So you did your dad eventually enter the kitchen, or did Cody go to your dad in the office? No, my dad came in when he heard that me and Cody were talking. And what, what was the conversation then? When they started to talk, I just left the room, and I just went back upstairs. So you didn't hear what they talked about? I mean, not in any. It was it was more just that he was defending that it's just you know that I just did this and that it's not like it's costing any money. Were they, were they yelling? Did they raise their voice? They, or they were talking. They were. They were yelling. Did you hear any threats or? My dad had said that um, that he was that everybody had agreed that if I had done this, that I would have to go. That there wasn't any more wiggle room or second chances or anything like that. And then, uh, you know, he came around to the base of the staircase and then he told me that I need to go. Your father did? Yeah. And then I told him that I was just trying to pick up the last few things that I needed to. Uh, there was like a bag of my, like a, a trash bag of like my clothes um, that I had still not unpacked from when I got back from Cornerstone that I just, you know, I had to gather and put into my car, you know, all that, just random stuff. And then um, I don't know what time I actually left, but I think it was closer to like midnight or something. And when you left, where was your mother? When I left, my mom was still just in her office. And where was your dad? Dad and Cody were just yelling inside the kitchen. So I guess when not, you left, really, you heard them not, yelling? Not really yelling anymore, but they were... It was basically just the same exact conversation that had been going on, where there was nothing left, and then Dad looked through some of my things to make sure that I wasn't taking anything that wasn't mine. Uh, I think the only thing that he had a problem with was that uh, I had taken like um, like some of my my paperwork bills from like the Chapman Law Group, but then since I wasn't the one paying for it, that they would need those. But then I still just ended up keeping it because I figured nothing else was going to like be covered for me or anything. So then after I left, I took that the Fort Christmas Road um, that connected up with 50 and then I was just at the Publix for the rest of the time. The same Publix we talked about earlier on really? 419. So yeah. from about midnight till 7 a.m. like you said you were at Publix. Publix. And then is everything else the truth as far as the job interview the job and so on and so forth? All the rest of the times were accurate and when I looked at the site I I did not, I, I only saw a small blurb. So when did you learn that your family was dead? I had been worried since last night when I was uh, just in the hotel, but I knew when you guys told me. I mean, like, I knew when you guys had told me. You already knew, though. But I had... You already said... You know. At any point, did you feel like you needed to reach out to Cody and see if he was okay, or...? I just didn't want to call anywhere. I just didn't want to know. But you couldn't call. I, well, I mean, you had brought up the hotel. Hotel room was there. Phone, but I, just didn't even, there. I didn't even think it was to use that. You got a medical background, correct? Yes. You ever been to an autopsy? No. Okay. An autopsy tells us a lot of things. Cause of death, a lot of times, how close somebody was to something. Again, remember what I told you earlier? She didn't fire a gun, he didn't fire a gun. 
you know, fire gun. So they didn't get into a shooting amongst themselves inside the house. Angles tell us a lot of things. Dad was over here when he got shot. The bullets in the cabinet and in the wall. We know that. We, that's one of those facts we just can't dispute. I see where shell casings are over here. I see where shell casings are in here. I see where shell casings are there. Cody was shot the minute he walked in the door when he first got home. Bullet went through him from his from his head to the back of his head. Hit the door frame and packed it into the wall. He never fired. He never fired. She never fired. And we know what time Cody left work. I mean, from his boss, from his co-workers. And you got to remember, we've talked to everybody before we talked to you. So we know what time he left work. We know why he told his co-workers and his boss why he left work. And we know what time he got home. And we have text messages that he has sent people afterwards. So based on what you're telling us, that he comes home and has this confrontation, talks to you, talks to his dad, you leave about midnight, and he's still there talking to your dad in the kitchen, none of that adds up. That can approximate the time of death based on the body. Now is the time, Grant. Now is the time, buddy. I'm, I'm just so I believe this, this, and this happened while you were still present in the house. And for whatever reason, you don't want to tell us. We understand your father was abusive. And we understand that he was the asshole. And if he threatened you, that he was going to kill you when you came back, you were probably in fear, were you not? So did your brother come home to try and defend you? And then this gunfight happened? And you got so scared that you left? No, I mean, I, I, I had left when I had said that I had left. Which time? Around the night or midnight? No, around the midnight time. Again, we know stuff from, from the medical examiner office of times. I said this a couple of times. He never fired a gun. He never fired a gun. She never fired a gun. Nobody did. Nobody in the house fired a gun. Fact. We know. I'm going to get DNA off the guns that are on scene and the cartridge casings. And all any that. Any reason to believe that your fingerprints or your DNA will be on any of those weapons or the cartridge cases that are on the scene? I mean, not that I can think of. I mean, I know that me and Cody had, you know, like, I mean, we had used each other's guns before in the past, like when we go to the range, but... But you what? said you had no access to these guns now. Right. I mean, but yeah, I mean, it was like a long, that was a long time ago. So, I don't know, there's... So the gun that's still on scene and the gun on your father's waistband, is your DNA or fingerprints going to be on it? Not that I can think of. Let me throw something at you. We pulled financial records from your dad, you, Cody, and your mom. Remember that payment you made? Which one? Which the payment on, on uh, that, that bill you had? The five yeah. ninety nine ninety nine. I saw that one. Well, guess what got paid right about the same time? What? $33,000 of debt was paid off of his credit card. Same time. Within a very short time of each other. Those things go together. Records. Records show what was happening. Wait, thirty? What happened? Thirty-three thousand dollars on. I think your dad. It was a USAA credit card. Yeah, thirty-three thousand dollars was paid to pay off that credit card. I, I just don't know where else to go to get you to to, to come around because it does not make any logistical sense of what you're telling us. It doesn't. If these two got in a shooting, we would know. We would know they shot each other. We'd know that. But why mom? 
things just got so bad and out of hand, like never it's been before in your life, never been here before in your life, or your family's life. He's pissed. His future, his retirement, his plans are being upset by you because of the financial cost. I would almost bet this is just a horrible, bad incident that on any other day wouldn't happen. But you and me both know, as does she, what happened that night. You're coming around and I really appreciate it, Grant. I do appreciate it. Now you're starting to tell more of the truth. Everybody minimizes when they're in a stressful situation. They do. My boss is going to start yelling at me and try to minimize the fact that I'm thinking about what am I going to do? How do I explain to him what happened legitimately? Not that I'm, I want to be a liar, but let me explain to him how legitimately something happened. Where how I bumped my defender on my car, got a ding in it. Try to think, well, let me how am I going to explain this? And you've already told us a lie. This whole map thing is bullshit. So when people start telling little fibs, they add up to big ones. And I told you, just tell the truth. I already know the truth. I know the truth. You can't convince somebody of something they already know the facts of. Walk outside today. You try to tell me it's night, and I know it's 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 noon. I know it's daytime, right? We both agree. Here's the time. Tell me what happened. Tell me what really happened in this very short time to get to where we are here. Tell me a hundred times. None of them fired a gun. None of them. They called gunshot residue. There's no gunshot residue on anybody's hands. Nobody fired a gun. He didn't shoot him. He didn't shoot him. Neither one shot them. I'm telling you, look at everything. He walked in the door, shot them, and he walked in the door. Because right down here is a bag he carries in. Dropped right there where he opened the door, walked in, and gets shot. There's Dad's lunchbox right there. Dad came home, was probably messing with it right around here. Arguments, whatever's going on. But there was even an argument. Dad gets shot, and he drops right here. And most likely either got pulled or crawled over here over here. I wonder what DNA is going to be in that blood right there. What's going to be on your dad's pants? We got his pants. We take we take all the clothes, all everything, everything that we take. Your DNA going to be found on his pants? No. You sure? It may be something a question I'm asking I already know the answer to. I know, but uh, my DNA wouldn't shouldn't be on his pants. Shouldn't? Okay. Explain to me, I just need you to tell me, why the minute he walks in, he gets shot. He shot, it's right there, just above there is, is, is what it is. We got an investigator of the autopsy right now, and a doctor saying, here's what happened here where he shot. Cody shot right below the eye, it comes out the back of his neck, and into the wall. Dad shot twice. And the doctor basically said he could have crawled from here to here because of the injury. And we're going to look at their clothing, your clothing, for DNA, gunpowder, blood spatter, all of that. Inside of your car. All the stuff that's in your room. All your electronic footprint we're going to look at. We will look at it. We will see it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole lot easier for you just to say what happened then to have to come up here and say, here, boom, 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 because that, that may, may change the direction of this case severely. Of whether somebody says, here, let me tell you what happened. It got, got me here. This blew up. He's been threatening me. He's upset at me. I've ruined, you know, his financial success and his, his plans for retirement with the Cody house. Cody tried to get involved, and he wanted to protect Cody. That makes sense. You and Cody are close. I just, I, I don't... I don't have the answer for anything else. Okay. This is, this is the last time before I'm going to walk out and then I'm done. Then I'm done for good. When I'm done, I'm done done. They won't let me, hey, can I come back and talk to you? The minute I walk out that door with your story is where you stay at. That's your, that's your lot in life. I'm more than willing to sit here all day and all night if you want to, to talk to find the facts. But I can't, I told you from the beginning, I will not deal with somebody that's not being truthful with me. You're not being truthful. You're not telling me the truth. You've lied, and we've forgiven you over that. We've forgiven you over it. You can't lie about this, Grant. You can't. This is too important for your family of what has happened. 
There's not somebody. There's not somebody out running around the United States to kill them. There's not. There's no. There's nobody out there. Some hidden killer. There's not. You don't show the the, the remorse that you should for someone who's, who's lost three family members. Body language, eyes, and demeanor. Here's the time, man. I know it's tough. Tell the truth, because when I walk out, there is no, there is no another day. And it's gonna look worse for you when we prove it by the DNA, the gunpowder, the blood spatter, fingerprints. Now is the time for you to be honest with us and is exactly what happened in that house before you left. We're, we'll be there for weeks gathering evidence. We are going to build the case because we're going to disprove the fact that nobody else came in this house. We already, we already know that answer. But at some point, we will build a case to the conclusion that nobody else will win. And I just, I don't have anything else that I can say. You know, my brother even said the same thing of like, when all this financial stuff was happening, like why I couldn't show like a like sadness towards it, and uh, I just don't know. I mean, I don't. I just don't know what else to say. Do you not feel bad for doing this to your family? You don't know what? You don't know if you feel bad for doing this to your family? I mean, I've been getting blamed for the last half a year for everything, and I've been trying to move forward into a positive direction. And then every day I'm reminded of all the trouble that I had caused. And then I keep being told the same thing over and over again, but there's nothing that I can do to change it. Do you regret doing this to each one of your family members? I didn't do that to each one of them. Who did? I don't Who has such an axe to grind with your family that they shot him twice in the head, him in the head, and her? Who has it? Who, here, you, you sit in my seat for a minute. Sit in my seat. Get out of here. Sit right here. Come here. Sit right here. Get out of that seat. Sit right there for me. Sit on it, look at it, look at it from, from, from our side. Look at it from our side. Think of it from what, the way we look at it. Independent. What are we here for? One thing. The blindfolded ladies with justice. Justice is all we're here for. Justice. Look at it. Who has a motive? Who has a motive to hurt your family? You could say Jason. But we already know what Jason was. I can account for every bit of, of Jason's activity. Every bit of it. Jason gave a statement. He was, of course, the first thing we looked at is Jason telling the truth. Can we verify what he told us? And in, in quick succession, we did. He said, I was X, 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 X. And he went, yep, he sure was. And we know exactly when Cody left work. And know when Cody got home and know when Cody stopped answering his phone. And know when bills were paid. And knows when vehicles left. And know when they when phones tagged hotspots. Know it all. Know every bit of it. Now it's time for you to admit to what you know. Because you're saying, I didn't do something, I don't know something. It's an easy, easy thing to say to yourself, but you can't say it to us. Because facts and evidence don't lie. I've done everything I can do to get to the bottom and the truth. And we're not getting there. But I promise you down, the, down at some point, the facts will get there. And then you're going to ask, hey, can I talk to you and tell you what happened? And the answer is no. After, it's, after we walk out of the room, like I said, when it's done, there is not a second chance.
There's only one, there's one time to make a first impression. You heard that one before? This is it. I believe you're not a bad guy. I do. I believe you want to tell us what happened. And there's a reason this got so bad. There's a reason. accused you of, you didn't do.
Think, think, think about that. I want to talk to her for a minute. Think, think about the, 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 the last life preserver I can give you. Think about it. Take a few minutes just to, to reflect on it, and then we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes, and then we'll go from there. And what happens is what happens. Fair enough?
You right, Grant? Okay. Need some food, some water. Good. You good to stay for a while longer? You okay? I mean, I just I just don't have anything more that I can say. I don't okay. know what the next. I'm not keeping here. You, if you want to stay, well, I'll, I'll talk to you till whatever, till you're you're happy with with everything and you're okay. Um, you're not detained. You're not being kept here. You're here. You're here willingly. Remember we talked about that. You're still looking. You're still, you're still here voluntarily. I'm not. I'm not detaining you. I'm not keeping you. Like I said, if you want to walk out and take a break, catch your breath, get something to eat. If you want something to eat, we'll, that was been here for for a while. If you want something to eat, I'd be more than happy to get some food. Whatever you want, we'll send somebody to go get it, or whatever you want to do. It's it's totally up to you. Of of, like I said you're voluntarily here. I will, I will stay here and talk to you until you get everything off your chest as, as long as you want to. But you're here on your own accord. We, we talked about that at the beginning. Remember, you're here because you want to be here. You don't, you know, you wanted to, to, to come up here. You had no problem coming. You're here. So you don't want to be here. You don't have to be here. I don't want to be here anymore. Okay. Give me a minute. We'll be chatting. Somewhere you want to go? Me too. We can put you up in a room for the night. I know things are tough for you. I was just going to go back to the hotel. I don't think you're going to be able to get back into that room. Oh. But if you want, we can put you up somewhere for the night. A friend said so we don't mind putting you up in a hotel for the night. Mm -hmm. We got some hotels right here in Sanford. That'd be all right. Yeah. Good change. Okay. Fine. What I'll do is uh, we'll get you up somewhere. I'll give you my card, my phone number. If you want to talk to me, you're more than welcome to call me. And uh, we'll move forward from there. Fair enough. Any questions of me before I go, or before before we walk like, out? I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Like what am I uh, like allowed to do? Live your life. And what I mean, because it's like I have my uh, like my wallet and all that stuff. It's back at the hotel room and. We got some hotels right here in Sanford. That'd be all right. Yeah. 
for Jamie. Okay, fine. What I'll do is uh, we'll get you up somewhere. I'll give you my card, my phone number. If you want to talk to me, you're more than welcome to call me. And uh, we'll move forward from there. Fair enough? Any questions of me before I go? Or before, before we walk out? I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Like, what am I uh, like allowed to do? Live your life. And what if, I mean, it's like I have my, uh, like my wallet and all that stuff. It's back at the hotel room and like, cell phone and all that stuff. What? That's probably going to remain with us. Um, we can make sure you get get uh, hotel and get you some food. If you need some food, something to eat. I know you say you don't eat much, but if you want something to eat, we'll grab you some food. Grab you something to drink. Tell them. get touch with Jason tell him where you're at. Yes, I mean, I guess if you could do that, like just wherever I'm staying or whatever, if he, yeah, I just, I don't know, that's an hour or not. No, I understand, man, I do. I do. <coughs> so, yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. Sir? Yeah, we're, just, we're trying to figure out, we're, you know, hang tight, like I said, um, try to figure out a place to take a day, get you to a, uh, to, um, um, place to stay for the night. We should work on that right and figure out what, what, um, what we need you to. You good? You're for, you're, like I said, you're, you're free to go, but we're going to get you to, to a hotel, you know, somewhere here in Sanford that you can stay at for the night. We're just trying, trying to find an arrangement for that and see who's got, who's got available. Yes, sir. Yeah, water, coke, in it. I still have my water, but... Alright, Give me a
Hey man, we are right there at Jason's here. It's going to be a few more minutes. What I need to do is just for, for our investigation, get some pictures of you. We're going to collect your clothing. And if you have no issues, we're going to get a, a swab of your mouth, just a, a saliva for, for DNA to go along to make sure your story goes along with, with where we're at. Mm -hmm. No problem with anything? Mm -hmm. Give me a few minutes. As I, I apologize. The clothes aren't going to be the best in where we have it that there no, to get mm -hmm. some up. So we got some for you, some shorts and t-shirts and some shoes. And then uh, as soon as that's done, We'll get Jason here to talk to you. Okay. All right. So good. Anything else? No. no, no. All right. We'll go here. Th this room is recorded. The next room we're going is, is, is not recorded. I'm going to go grab Jason. So, uh, I, I take it you know what happened. Yeah. I just, I'm going to ask you plain out. You, you are not part of it anyway. No. How, when was the last time you saw everybody? Uh, I left the house between like uh, midnight and like 12.30. On Thursday night? So Friday morning? I going to the front. The why? Just... Did you, that's when you went to a hotel? No, no. The first night I uh, I stayed just in the public's parking lot by the tractor supply. Okay. And why did you leave, though? His big dad had kicked me out on a Thursday because I was still talking to the woman. 
that had caused everything, and I was uh, using mom's cell phone to do that with her knowledge, but uh, no, but n not uh, Cody or dad's. So then dad found out somehow, uh, and that was one of the things mm -hmm. that he had said would lead to my being removed from the premises. So he forced you, he basically told you you had to leave? Yeah. Okay. So who could have done this? I don't know. I don't... So you didn't have any problems or troubles with this woman or the online? You didn't owe no. him any money? No. I mean, there's no. no, like, loan shark out looking for you or... No. I, mean, I just don't see how... Things aren't adding up. I just... I'm really confused, Grant. I don't understand. How did you get money to pay for a hotel? I still had a few hundred dollars on my debit card, and what? then Cody uh, gave me his debit card. Okay. And... I want to believe you, Grant, but you're the last person that I could put in that house. And I know what happened over the last six months. I can understand the troubles that you've gone through, but it's hard for me to think that you would break to this point. Mm -hmm. But I don't... I, who else can I blame? Who? How are we going to find out who did this? I don't know. I don't have the answers. So what are your intentions? Do you understand what we have to do now? If you're not the person that did it, we have months of stuff that we have to take care of from our dead parents. Months. Months. You know how much stuff is in that house? We have to go through it all. I have to call people in California to let them know that Margaret Amato is not alive anymore. I gotta call at 3 o'clock in the morning because Cody's 30 years old and has perfectly good organs to donate. And I can't, I can't call that shot. He's not an organ donor. I had to say no. So that means there's someone out there that could have used his organs, but we weren't prepared for this. I love you more than anything in this world, just like I loved Cody, Grant, and Dad. I know Dad was an asshole. I know Cody was an asshole. But they were our family. And they would have never done anything to hurt us. Mm -hmm. The shit you did, you could have been in jail. You would have been in jail for years. Mm -hmm. And they covered it up for you. I have a feeling the FBI is already involved because no matter how much dad can overcome the money laundering, that's money that was moved. Just because they gave it to you as a gift, you, that, that, you can't just claim gifts as income. The FBI wants to know what the fuck is money being moved in that amount. I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't believe you, and I probably will have resentment for the rest of my life, whether you did it or you didn't do it, but I need closure, I need to know what happened to my mother, my father, and my brother Cody, because I wasn't there to fucking help, and that hurts me. That hurts me a lot, man. I may not have been able to stop you. You probably may have hurt me too. But at least I would have known what happened. And now I'm in fucking who knows what now. I'm lost. And it scares me that you want to leave here and not face what happened. Because... You're putting my life at risk then. You're putting Donna's life at risk, Grandma's life. How do we know what you're going to do? What happened on the job interview last Friday? 
And it all sounded good. It sounded like everything was moving forward. And then I was supposed to hear something on Tuesday or Thursday of this coming week. And? Nothing? It was just on Friday. It was last Friday, so it's been a little over a week. No, it was just this Friday. That's not possible. Friday was yesterday. Yeah. So you're telling me you had a job interview yesterday, but you got kicked out Thursday night. Right. I had to get my suit and everything and put it into the car. Okay. Where was your job interview? It was over on uh, Lee Vista with... Uh, something scripts. So I mean, so they'd be able to verify that you were there for an interview. I don't know. I'm gonna feel really bad. I mean, this is just. I understand. I mean, I really do. I understand all your thoughts and what you're thinking and and everything. And this is just. Um. You know, I know what I did to everybody over the months and okay. everything like that. I know you did. And I know that you know the hell of dealing with it every single day even when you're trying to move forward. Yep. With Dad I, and Cody and all that stuff. Yep. And I understand it was probably harder for you because you lived in the house. I had the option of getting out, which gave me the ability to not have to deal with it on a daily basis. I understand the sh mental struggles you went through with Cody and Dad's relationship, you and Dad's relationship, everybody's relationship in the family. You know how smart everybody is in the family when it comes to medical information. And that's what scares me even more about you. If you didn't do it, then you have to know that someone else did it. There is no way that there were people out there looking for our parents or brother. They had to have been looking for you. There's no way that mom, dad, or Cody owed anybody money, had anybody sh looking for them because of something that they did. No, I don't think that it's some money shark or monger or somebody like that. Right, because nothing was stolen from the house. Right. So, like, people that are looking to compensate for financial obligations would have taken TVs, computers, jewelry, monetarily things. Right. From what I've been advised, that is not the situation. So, that leaves that the people were murdered for the reason that they were in the way of getting to something else. I just, I don't understand why, I don't understand why it happened. I was taking my steps forward despite everything that I was supposed to do, that I was supposed to be doing. The slip up was still communicating with the woman, but... What were you allowed to take when Dad kicked you out? Obviously basically, your card. Basically my possessions, my cell phone, my iPad, my Surface some clothes. Weapons? I don't have any weapons. So there's going to be no weapons in the hotel that you no. were at last night? No weapons in the car? No. No weapons buried on the property? No. I don't, I sold all my weapons when I was trying to make money. I, yep, time. I remember my mom, mom telling me that. What, what about, uh, what, do you, yeah, um, I don't know what else to say, but I'm scared for you, and I'm scared for myself, and I don't feel comfortable with you being around me alone. I'm sorry. I could take you physically, but if you have a knife or know where a gun is, I'm fucked. And I have little girls that I have to raise. I have a, a woman that is depending on me for the rest of my life. I understand. Even if you didn't, it's going to be so hard for me to figure out what to do with you. You do not deserve jail.
But I can't come to fucking have attorney press charges for you to be killed. Uh, Grant, I need you to be honest with me, man. I need to have closure. And if it doesn't come from your mouth and I have to hear it from an attorney or a, a law enforcement or the news, going to be harder for me and I know if you can take mom and dad and Cody's life it's hard for you to comprehend that my emotions are going to be that but it's unbelievably scary Grant and I don't believe in God I don't have a strong religious belief but I will pray that this is solved justifiably because it was not fair that mom, Cody, and dad's life were taken. They did not deserve it. No matter what feelings were felt by anybody, they were good people. Mm -hmm. And they showed it by protecting me all the time. But dad kicked you out. That's so because I still broke the rule and that it was apparently dad's job to be the hammer person or whatever he would describe it as. Right. I, I was told that you would not be have access to be able to contact this woman. Why do you feel the intent to still contact her? It was just the whole emotional thing. I mean, that's, that's all okay. that I can say. So are you saying that you love the woman? I feel like I did, yeah. Okay. You feel like you did, so you don't feel that way now? Well, I mean, now it's pretty much you know, I mean, it's not what it used to be, is all I can say. Because she's aware of what has right. happened in the last several months. Right. So why do you feel the need to still contact her? I don't know. I mean, it's... I don't, I don't know, apart from... Just like that feeling when you care for somebody and you've been with them for however many months. Yo, I know that feeling. So, I mean, I was just... You know, I knew Looking that I for closure to some degree, yeah, and I knew that I could never do any of the money stuff anymore. Okay. So I guess that was like it hurt, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, because you can't like, carry that persona that you carried before. But you know, the crazy part is, you're still the same person. You are still Grand Amano that I grew up with for 17 years. That I played with that we hid shit from dad so that we didn't get in trouble? Who covered those grenades? Mom. Right. I, I just... I, I don't... I don't feel like we're getting anywhere and I'm gonna be honest, I don't feel comfortable with you staying with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, if in a week or a couple of days or 12 hours and something else is discovered, then I might have a change of heart, but I have no other options in my head of what's going on, especially if you're confirming that there's nobody looking for you. Huh. And if you're saying that you ran away or stayed in a hotel because you were forced to or you were told you couldn't stay there, I, I don't live there, so I have no proof. The only people that live there are dead, so they can't say anything. But uh, the morgue called me this morning, so I have to make decisions for Mom, Cody, and Grant and Dad in the next, you know, couple of days. So uh, just letting you know that um, I'll be making those decisions because until I'm given verifiable information that you did not do it, I don't think you have the right to make that decision. You already made the decision on whether or not they can live or not. That's not your job. All right, I'm ready. I do love you, though. Just remember that. Just like Mom, Cody, and Dad loved you. Nobody loved you any more or any less.
I'm going to pray for you, brother. Because I can't pray for Mom, Dad, and Cody anymore. Each mess on the chat room.
anything else you need to talk about before we let you go? Because mm -hmm. now's your time. You know that. Mm -hmm. Like Danny said, once you're out of here, you there's no coming back from this. We're giving you every opportunity to tell us what happened in that home that you have not told us. Mm -hmm. So you're aware that when you leave here, you're not going to have any chance to redeem yourself and tell us the truth after the fact. I understand. And you're okay with that. Okay. You can live with yourself knowing that you're not going to tell us the truth. I've said what I can say.
You ready, man? Yeah. Question for you real quick. You don't want to hurt yourself. Yeah. You don't want to hurt anybody else. Yeah. No suicidal thoughts. 